everybody, this is episode 20 of Tandem Podcast. On this month's episode, it's Ralph McMorrin, Robert, Monkey, uh, whatever you want to call him. Um, he's been in scootering for a while, been through a lot of different company changes, and I always felt that he didn't really have much of a voice, like he had a external image to a lot of people in scootering, but a lot of people just didn't really know him or know the motivations behind uh, some of the stuff he did. So I thought it was a good chance to catch up with him and just see what he's been doing with scootering and just in in life in general, uh, because I thought a lot of people would want to hear the actual stories behind a a lot of the stuff that he's been involved with. So here it is, episode 20 with Ralph. I think what a lot of people might confuse is like um, sort of how different of a world that Riverside is compared to like L.A. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So just just talk about like Riverside in general, because I don't think people realize how like isolated it is from like all the other scooter riders pretty much in SoCal. Everywhere in like SoCal, like the beach, the mountains, everything, we're kind of just like in the middle. Like, and it kind of sucks. Like, it sucks, but it's cool at the same time, you know? Mm. I can go to Big Bear in an hour. I can go to the beach in an hour. I can go to LA in an hour without traffic. <laughs> but, um, just like all scooter riders, it was like really hard for me at, the, at a young age, too, when I didn't drive to just get places because everyone was just so far. Like, everyone was about like 45 minutes from me. It's just so different here than everywhere I've met most of my scooter riders and everything just because. Riverside's kind of just, I don't want to say it's like, it's not poor, you know, but it is like definitely lower, lower end than every other place I've been to kind of been all the scooter kids. I'm trying to think of like how to explain Riverside. It's really hard. I think, I think the best way to explain Riverside is like you have to meet Efren and then that's like, there's Riverside <laughs> for you. Yeah. You know? But um, I don't know. It just really sucked because like, well, at first it was like all my friends are from Riverside that scootered, right? And that, that was cool. Like, we all just hang out and hunt all day. But then um, when I got started hanging out with Tyler, that's when it sucked because, like, I wanted to ha- go ride with those dudes all the time. And Tyler and Stefan lived, like, 45 minutes from me. And then every time they're just like, let's go to L.A., let's go there, and whatever. But um, it was hard when I didn't drive. But luckily, I had my grandma, and she just, like, took me wherever I wanted to. It was super sick, you know? Those people you were talking about that you were riding with, like, was that, uh, like, the DXG or, like, the 951 people? Like, who who was that group of people? So, at first, it was just, like, Hump Park. So, Hump Park was originally just um, me, Jared Bruns, Nikki Martinez, Michael Martinez, uh, who else is there? Chris Gascoigne. Event, like, I remember I, I knew how to do, like, double telps and, like, I think I could do, um, like, bar spins, 540s and... Not 540 aerial, just we were just doing fly out at that time. So these are all like fly out tricks mainly. And then um, one day, like I just seen these older, two older dudes come to Hump Park. And this is when like scootering just like changed in my mind. So it was like Chris Gascoigne and this um, this like old legend. His name was James, and he was like the first person I've ever see- seen do a backflip on a scooter. And it was crazy, you know. I was like 11. I just seen a dude backflip on a scooter. Yeah. I was like, dude, these guys are pro. They're on Razor. They have to be. <laughs> but they weren't. They were just like the locals. And then um, Chris Gascoin is doing back scooter flips and Superman and, and everything. And I was just like, yo, like, what the heck? And Chris broke his wheel. And I was like, I have an extra yak wheel at my house. And I like, I called my grandma, like, grandma, can you bring this yak wheel for this guy? He's pro and like, he doesn't have a <laughs> wheel. And so um, she brought it. And then he was like, thank you. Thank you. Like, we started talking, hanging out. And then, um, Oh, and then uh, Cody McQueen actually was there from the beginning as well. He was one of the biggest, like, he taught me everything because we both did frontside naturally. So he was just like, oh, learn this trick, learn this trick. And um, that, and then then he was friends with Chris, and I didn't know that. So I told Cody, like, yo, this guy was here. And he was like, oh, Chris? And I was like, yeah, and they were, like, already really good friends. So, and then that was originally just Hump Park. Mm-hmm. And then when was it? Then, then um, we had a Hump Park competition one time. And uh, this is way back. This is like, there's footage of it too online. It's like Pump Park Scooter comp- scooter Zone competition. Yeah. And and uh, like right like a week before, it's funny because I didn't even think about it, but like everyone came a week before, you know, and like they took it very seriously and everything like that. Wow. And uh, <laughs> yeah, like there's so many people there a week before. And then um, to me, I was amazed, you know, all the skaters were so bummed because like, 
they, they liked us, you know? There's only, like, six, seven of us, and but they're, like, we're, we're all cool. And then, like, just one day, there's, like, 20 kids there, you know, just on a scooter doing actual tricks. They're, they weren't, like, super bummed. They just wanted to ride the park. And then, um, who was it? It was the, mainly the DXG crew was just in town, you know? Mm. And then uh, that's when I actually met Nick Darger, too, at that time, because he came with them as well. And I was just like, what's going on? You know, like I was so confused and everything and like everyone knew each other. And then Nick's from Corona, John Raddick is from like Diamond Bar and then like Dustin Nooner is from like San Clemente, I think. And then I was just like, yo, what are what's everyone doing here? And uh, they told me about SR. That's how they all chat and everything. Uh... So I went home that day and I went on SR and then like I was like, oh, this is sick. And then Nick Darger added me and like um, introduced me to a lot of people. And then when the competition started, that's when I like really was like, holy shit, there's so many scooter riders. There's um, Andrew Broussard was there. Who else was there? Kenny Owens, mm -hmm. um, Taylor Illig. And there's just like so many scooter riders and I've never seen that before. So that's kind of just how I met everyone. Like, like in the beginning was just DXG and 951. Like I just met them all at once. Everyone outside of Riverside. Yeah, I didn't know there was like a huge competition at Hunt like that. What year do you think that was? Oh man, and that had to be that was like I don't know if you ever seen, but when I was like a kid, I had like bleach streaks in my hair. Oh really? No, I, I don't think I've seen it. <laughs> so that was like I did that fifth grade summer. So because I it was like blue actually like blue streaks in my hair, and then um, sixth grade they turned into like just blonde bleach, and then uh. Yeah, so sixth grade was that two thousand six, I think two thousand five, maybe. Who was it? It was um, because like everyone kind of at that time rode very differently. You know, you had John Radke, and he was on Razor at the time, but not on RVM three. He was RVM four, right? Everyone was like, "John's on Razor," and I was like, "Really?" And I went to go watch RVM, and he's not in it. You know? Yeah. And I was like, "What the <laughs> heck?" And then like they're lying, they're all lying, and then uh, he really was on Razor the whole time. And then, like, John was, like, the, like, he can do any trick, you know what I mean? Like, John Radke was probably, like, one of the best scooter riders at that time, if not the best, you know? Even mm -hmm. if you put, like, the Terry Prices and uh, Cody Donovan, like, John could do it all. I think the only thing he never learned was flares. Oh, weird. <laughs> yeah, he was too tall, but still, he did everything. Handrails, flips, all the crazy flip tr scooter, like, umbrellas and all that stuff the dono flips he did it all man and it was crazy and then you had um kenny owens who could just tail it faster than everyone else <laughs> <laughs> he did like i think he was like uh the first one to do uh like it was whip front scooter flip whip like fly out no one's ever seen that before there's mm -hmm. like footage of it online on youtube like kenny owens best trick at hunt park and uh he does it and like you see Cody McQueen right there on the side and everyone's all stoked on it and you just see uh, Cody McQueen like is that a sidewinder like not knowing <laughs> like obviously not knowing there's like that it's just a whip front scooter flip whip you know but yeah he's like is that a sidewinder and it's so funny <laughs> so I, I don't if people don't know about Hunt Park I mean it's like a really I don't know I guess famous or like just so many people have ridden scooters there and I know so much crazy stuff has happened there because I heard stories from you. So just like tell us a little bit about Hunt Park and maybe if you can think of a couple of stories that have happened there. So Hunt Park, when I first went, it was just I my first time going to Hunt Park was right when it opened and I had to be in like fourth grade and I went there on a skateboard. And it originally was for people like who have been there recently. Like there's a street section now, like with stairs, a bank and a few rails, even a handicap rail now. That's what everyone goes to ride Hum Park for now is that handicap rail. But um, originally, all that stuff wasn't there. That it was just that very small bowl section. And there's just those two ledges on the side, the eight rail and the bolt and the pyramid. And that was it. That's all we rode. And we would go like every single day. Pretty, and then uh, they added, when did they add that stuff? I think in like 2000, 2015 maybe, they added that street section. And... Um, Hump Park is really cool at first because it was like locals only. It was diehard, like not diehard, like no one else can come in. But it's just if you went there on the regular basis, everyone probably knew you. The BMX riders, the skaters, like, you know. Yeah. And everyone was friends. Like everyone just like the only beef at first was just BMXers and skaters. The skaters all liked us, like because we all knew like the skaters had younger brothers who scootered with us and like we just saw each other every day and they like would be like, yo, you should do this on a scooter. You should do like tail up grind and 
all this stuff. And when we were kids, we were like, nah, we want to do like backflips, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but then, um, then like all the skaters just got along with the scooter riders. Like we never had problems with skaters really at Hump Park. Like all, all like the older dudes, you know? I'm trying to think like what else was at Hump Park. Like there's this really cool like handicap, like handicap rail at first. And it was like the, the exit to the way you get out of the skate park originally. And mm-hmm. like everyone would grind it over a grass gap, and then like you'd have to curve right away because there's a fence and everything, and it was really cool. That was probably one of the coolest things at Hunt Park. And then when they built the new park, they removed it because they put those like ledges there and everything. But it was originally just me, Jared, Nikki, Michael, and like Cody McQueen there, like every single day. Like if there's so many people, like there were so many scooter riders who came through at the time that were like they were like my mentors who t- showed me like scootering at Hunt Park, you know. Yeah. He showed me how to double tail whip and do all these crazy tricks and stuff. But there's like, no one would know who they are besides if you like, knew like you went to Hunt Park at that time. I think one of the coolest stories ever was uh, even like, because Hunt Park's always been kind of like ghetto, right? Like there's been like a Chris Gascoigne apparently saw like someone get pistol whipped and like shot at before there and everything. And um, when I one time I got grounded from going to the skate park, not grounded, I just wasn't allowed to go there anymore because right when I got dropped off there's a shooting right in front of us like people were shooting at each other i had to be like it was like my grandma finally stopped hanging out at the skate park with me she was just gonna drop me off yeah. and then she drove away and i had to be like 13 and um she just like you can't go to home park no more and then i just stopped going for like two months and then i finally went back <laughs> but all the like cholos and stuff like or the gang where they weren't cholos it was more just like gangsters and everything like that um they started like becoming friends with like the skaters and the scooter riders and the bmxers and i remember this like random crew came up asking everyone like where are you from where are you from at the skate park like why would you go to a skate park and ask everyone that right so they're asking everyone like where are you from where are you from and then out of nowhere the the, like the gangsters who like hang there on the average basis or every day like pretty much they were just like yo yo you don't come to our park like messing with our skaters these are our homies and like they like beat the heck out of these guys just because they were asking like all the skaters and stuff like that's how like local it was like even though the gangsters liked us it was crazy like everyone knew each other yeah it was it was a crazy time like oh that's old hunt park though like right when this new park came out everyone started going and no one even goes there anymore like oh yeah and you mentioned uh scooter zone were you were you like a part of that since the beginning what, what was like the early days of that like I wasn't like one of the first people because um, there's this kid about he was a little bit younger than me and uh, me and him were like growing up together just kind of like uh, trying to compete with each other like who could learn first and he's the one who told me about Skeeter Zone and uh, like, at that time they had uh, it's because that's when the pro models came out right so everyone wanted the pro models and then uh, they were like they're, they're at Skeeter Zone and so I went there and I started talking to James and he's the one that was just like we're gonna have a competition and everything and i was like yeah yeah you know that sounds cool think it's gonna be locals and that's when that whole competition happened but yeah i don't know i don't was no i wasn't on the team until uh nick darger became like the tm and stuff like i was, james like he just hooked me up all the time because he saw me in like every single day and everything but um yeah i didn't get on the team until nick darger and that was like at this little little shop right next to my house scooter zone was always by my house it was originally like this little shop um, probably like three blocks down, three blocks down the street from me, and then he said he's moving, and that's when he moved. Literally, it was like ten houses down from my house. Like Scooter Zone was down the street on the same street, <laughs> and so like once it was down the street, it was like after high school, I went to Scooter Zone like re- every single day. Like I would walk home, I just like I'm going to Scooter Zone, guys, see ya. And it was it was super sick. James just like was always like he it was like taking care of us, you know, like made sure we did what we needed to do. And then uh, when Nick Darger finally got on, like, was the TM, he was just like, yo, guys, let's, like, film videos for Scooter Zone. And he started picking out the team and everything like that. And then um, who else? I think Raymond was on the team with me as well. Mm-hmm. Who, and then um, there's – I'm trying to think who was, like – it had to be just Nick Darger. Like, Nick Darger was the one who kind of, like, got it. Like, Scooter Zone, probably, like, the team and the videos. Like, he was a big – he helped out James a lot with all that stuff. Yeah. Did you ever uh, work at Scooter Zone? Mm, no, I never. I'm, that's no. I'm, I'm probably like one of the riders that never worked there. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I never. I like used to just hang out there. I like. I didn't even know. Like it's funny because I didn't even build my own scooters there. Like because when I was a kid, my scooter used to be like janky, 
and I'd be like, yeah, whatever, it doesn't matter, man. And then I'd go to Scooter Zone, and then Nick Darger would just like grab my scooter, or Chris Gasquin when he worked there for a little bit. He was, they'd just grab my scooter and fix it for me, and like, now go ride. <laughs> and like, yeah, I was like, all right. And I had no idea what they ever did and everything. And um, I'm trying to think of like all, like everyone who was actually like part of Scooter Zone. Like Jared was part of Scooter Zone for a while after Nick Darger. Um, Jake show there's a lot of like there, uh, there's like so many people that were like part of Scooter Zone it was crazy like Scooter Zone I, didn't, I always forget about that time of like Scooter Zone time yeah they were huge I mean they were sort of like the vault of that day you know it's like the biggest like chain of shops I, I, I remember they had like I don't know how many but it seemed like all over SoCal like not just Riverside it was like essentially like a, a chain scooter store which is pretty crazy yeah no it was sick they had one yeah they had riverside the marietta and then um uh was that place like a what was it like santa clarita yeah santa clarita they had one out there yeah they even had one in australia for a little bit too oh wow i didn't know that that's crazy yeah there's one in australia it was yeah that's like super crazy yeah. they like they're on top of it at that point yeah. yeah now it's like i don't know what's going on over there now like i barely go over there and ever, like hang out over there there's a new because you've been to the original one like with the new the new park right wait, wait, wait i've been to the park with like the foam pit and stuff is is that not the same one yeah they made a new park there they they like move places and they have a new park there and i haven't even been there once yet like i don't even know where it is it's still in riverside but i just i have no idea where it is or anything uh okay yeah yeah but i don't know how they're doing like now i think the last time when at that old park with the foam pit they were saying uh it's mainly the park that keeps them alive oh okay huh that's interesting yeah I, I i think the best clip i've ever seen from that park is kirk falling from the roof into the foam pit <laughs> Dude, that is one of the funniest things <laughs> i've ever seen that is so insane like i don't i don't even know like the whole story or anything i just know like I, the way I heard was like he was just leaning like oh look the foam pit's right there and he just like fell through the glass into it oh you weren't there no I was I was at Arizona at the time because oh, okay. uh, they, they FaceTimed me right when that ha like right when that happened because they were like Ralph where are you come to Scooter Zone and I was like I'm in Arizona guys and um that was right when I got kicked off of Tilt and everything too <laughs> oh yeah yeah and um cause Tom Tom FaceTimed me and was like come to Scooter Zone and I was like I'm not I'm in Arizona now, guys. And they said they fa showed me on FaceTime the video of Kirk falling through. I was like, "What the hell?" Like, and I didn't get the full story because I think they were drunk. But yeah, yeah, Kirk was drunk, and I think he was just like at the park and looked up and saw the skylight like over the foam pit. And he's like, "Oh man, I bet you could like open up the skylight and jump into the foam pit." Mm -hmm. But but when he went to go like just check and see if you could do it. When he was leaning on the glass, like the glass just broke and oh my and he God. fell through. So it, he was just like seeing if it was possible. He wasn't like ready to jump. <laughs> <laughs> that's so insane. That's so lucky. <laughs> that is probably the most insane thing. Yeah, I mean that's got to be I don't know probably like twenty or thirty feet like into a foam pit. Like he, yeah, he was so lucky it actually lined up with the foam pit. Dude, that's so insane. I didn't yeah, see I didn't know the whole story that he went up there just to, like actually see if he was gonna like do it or something. Like that's even funnier, the fact that he uh, wanted to and it just happened. That's crazy. I wonder like like out of all the places, I, I wonder you know, because like they could have put that foam pit anywhere and there's not skylights on the roof everywhere. It's like that one just happened to be like directly above the foam pit. <laughs> Yeah, he got so lucky. Dude, the Skitter Zone camera was so good because they had so much footage of, like, kids just trying to backflip and stuff like that on in the foam pit and just, like, getting stuck upside down. or just You, you just so, seen so many, like, kids fail on the camera. It was good. They always, like, saved it and everything. <laughs> and every time I'd go in, they're just like, yo, check this one out, check this one out. And I was just, it was just like, like a compilation of kids just dying in the foam pit. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I was, um like, when I was writing these questions, I was looking up videos of you to try to think of stuff, and I, I mean, I, I kind of forgot, like, how much, like, park footage you had, like, when you first started riding and, like, some really gnarly stuff, so how did you, like, transition to being more interested in riding street from that? Like, what, what motivated you? That, it's funny, because um, I think I was, like, 
I don't know what it was, like what part it was exactly, but I remember, um, cause like every single video I've ever released from like even my very first scooter videos ever, there was still always like somewhat street in it, right? Because mm-hmm. Nick, Nick Darger was always like, dude, you guys want to go to spots? And I was like, yeah, yeah, like, sure. Like, I don't, I don't know, skaters go to spots. What do we do? Like, hit rails, whatever, you know? Yeah. And um, so we would do that. And then, um, wow, like, so I was already friends with Tyler when this happened because I remember we were filming for 951. And I remember because I used to always say, I'm going to quit scootering, guys. This is, I'm over it. <laughs> I said that like so many times when I was a kid, like every like week. And then um, we're at Brea 12 and, uh, I, I said I was going to, like, finger whip it or something or double finger whip it. I don't know what I said I was going to do down Brad 12, but I didn't do it. And then, um, you know Tyler's friend, the uh, Dylan? I don't know his last name, but the other Dylan? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah I, I know that guy, yeah. Yeah, so he was like, all right, Ralph, if you're quitting, let me get your scooter. And I was like, no, like, what if I do want to slowly, like, just casually ride? And he's like, man, you can't say you're going to quit smoking cigarettes and then keep a po- uh, pack of smokes in your back pocket <laughs> and i was just like that's so true and then uh, that was probably the last time i like rode with them for a while like when i was in that like park slash like i was just mainly park at that time and um tyler hits me up one day and is like yo dude Stefan wants to hit like hollywood 16 like do you want to come with us and film some street and i was like i probably didn't ride my scooter for three months and i was like sure and we go to hollywood 16 and um uh, they told me I should board slide the 12 stair. And then so I did it. And that's when, like, I was skating really hard before that uh, that whole month I didn't scooter. And so, like, I was just fully, like, skateboarding, you know. Like, I think Stay Gold just came out. And I was like, I wanted to be, like, Leo Romero, you know, just straight rails, 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 rails. And um, so I, they took me there. And I just board slid the 12. And that's when Stefan front scooter flipped the 16. And we filmed a lot that day, actually. And uh, that's when, like, the whole, like, me, Stefan, and Tyler just started, like, filming every weekend. Just right there and that's when the whole street thing also um when i was a kid mckean also like posted on sr like keep this kid riding street or something like that and i like got super stoked and i was like all right i'm gonna ride some more street too but when mckean said that i was still like in my park days so i like would keep the street clips like probably like three or four in there at least you know yeah but it wasn't like mainly just filming street i don't even know i think yeah just that tyler thing like yo, we're gonna go filming spots like every weekend. I was like, all right, let's do that. And that's what made me like focus on like riding street. And at that time when Tyler said that, like not that many people were really like street only, you know? Yeah, I know. I mean, it just used to be like you were a scooter rider and you, and you rode yeah. wh- whatever you were riding. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I think uh, it's funny because I, I feel like with scootering nowadays, like I know there's a lot of kids now so like a lot of the kids don't know me that like you know like even when i hang out with everyone they always want to hang out with like uh, uh like derek like when we did the northern thing in san diego they just want to hang out with like derek mar and uh and everyone else and i was just like dang and then these kids knew me but then they see me ride a bull even like even like derek was like dude you can do all these tricks and i was like yeah man like i used to do this stuff before you even rode he's like 15 <laughs> and i was like dude i did all this stuff way before you probably rode a scooter yeah, that's what I, that's why I was wondering. Um, do you like I I know you've like kind of over the years had like a an interest in like transition. Have you have you thought about like filming clips and I don't know like bull clips or something like that? I would like to, but I don't think like scooter riders really know how to film like transition. To be honest, I think mm-hmm. like they just go straight to long lens all the time, and it's like, dude, we can do like a long lens line, and then like the main trick fisheye. And then I wish some of my skater friends would be down to, like, film me, too. But, uh, so they could just film me in the bowl, you know? Yeah. But, I, I don't know. I just have, like, rules when it comes to, like, transition. And, um, that's what bums me out a lot about scootering. Watching, like, these scooter riders who, like, you know, they ride transition like a skateboard. You know, lip slides and all that. But it's, like, with scootering, it's kind of limited. So all the, all you see when scooter riders ride bowls are lip slides and board slides. And that's about it. And it's, like, dude, there's so much more to do, you know? Like, I mean, like, yeah, they do 50s too, but it's just always, like, the same stuff, you know? It's like, dude, you can still air out. You can, like, blast the indie, you know, or something. Yeah. But they just, they just, every time I watch scooter riders ride bulls that are, like, I don't want to say, like, into skateboarding, but, like, you know, you can see they're influenced by skateboarding. And they all they do is just lip slide. Like, that's the only thing you can do in a bull is just lip slide. And I'm just like, dude, there's so much more you can do, guys. <laughs> well, it's like a... I don't know. I, I feel like it's a hard jump to make. L- like, 
when most people ride bulls, like all they really can do is like lip slides and to do the next step of like, I don't know, like compared to a skateboard, like doing a really long 50 50 on coping on a scooter is so much harder. Yeah, that is. Yeah, that's true. I also think it's a, a lot of scooter riders aren't like gifted to have these Southern California skate parks. You know what I mean? Like I was, I grew yeah. up off just like <laughs> these huge transitions as a, like I was 12 riding like 10 foot quarter pipes, mm-hmm. you know? And a lot of people like, I remember Josh Young was saying, I think it was Josh Young where he was like, we don't have like a quarter pipe bigger than like five feet in my area. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> and he was like, yeah. And he was just like, yeah, that's why I won't drop in. Josh said he will not drop in on anything like bigger than five feet or something like that. <laughs> and I was laughing. And I was just like, what, dude? Damn. That also, but that's another thing. Like, I think Cooper Clark is killing it in transition right now. I think he's so sick to watch ride transition. Yeah. I think he's probably killing it the hardest in like the transition. Because I think scooter riders, scooter riders love mini ramps. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> when there's a mini ramp, scooter riders will tread that thing. They'll do anything. Like they're not scared. Mm-hmm. But then put like a like a nine foot quarter pipe with some like vert on it and they're just terrified like mm-hmm. they, they all they just can do is like a disaster and it's like dude just go full speed man if you mess up slide down the ramp like i don't know i just have a complete different thought i guess when it comes to transition because i grew up riding that but yeah well i, I always want to see i i feel like a lot of scooter riders as they get better at transition they sort of their progression turns into like a lot of just combos on transit transition instead of like going fast and like doing a long grind or something like that it's just like kind of dancing on the coping yeah and I've always wanted to see just somebody you know just do like a whip to front side 50 and hold the 50 for like 10 feet like (laughs) like going so fast or just I don't know stuff like that instead of like 270 lip to yeah no uh, to 270 or whatever (laughs) (laughs) yeah yeah uh just what else do they do they do like the the feeble smith or like feeble tail it back lip and it's like for like two seconds and going really slow you know yeah and it's just i don't know i wish i wish uh i've noticed like scootering is kind of i think that's what scootering is right now is just kind of stuck because like no one really wants to like put in that extra effort you know like there's always like even if it's a tail whip you can put in extra effort to make like just try really hard on a tail whip no matter it's the easiest trick yeah but Mm-hmm. you could try harder you know and when i watch kids ride transition i'm just like just go faster or like hold it longer like the scooter riders want to just land everything first try that's why <laughs> they don't want to take like the patience to like i don't know just like maybe make it look better or something like there's so many things to do in transition um i've i've noticed with this this is what i've been doing lately because no one for some reason does it and it bums me out because it's so simple it actually made front boards in transition a lot easier but uh, all I do is I just rock the wheel now. Like I don't I don't jump back in from board slides. Like I just r- literally rock no matter like every time like a rock and roll on a skateboard, right? Mm-hmm. And it helped me like so much. But then like you watch everyone else do front boards and they're hopping every time. Like dude, stop hopping. Like pivot. It's way cooler, you know. Yeah. And they're just like, nah, like because because they can don't land it first try. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, dude, you can. It's okay to mess up. Like even if it's an easy trick, like. I wouldn't be bummed if I missed a tail whip or something. Like, I'd still be pretty stoked, like, if I can make it look better. Yeah. Well, I, I know, I mean, another person I can think of besides Cooper would be Matt Grippy. Like, his mm. parts are almost all transition, and it's not, like, combos. It's just, I don't know. I think he does it pretty well. But I, I Yeah, I completely forgot about him. Yeah, but there's very few people. I mean, like, John Archer, but, I mean, he, he kind of rides everything, but he definitely shreds transition. Yeah, definitely. John, uh, I completely forgot about Griffey. Griffey also is like one of the gnarliest riders to touch transition. He has like no fear when it comes to transition. I love watching him ride it. Yeah, yeah. Like Griffey's like, yeah, it has like the BMX style, but then it's also like still scootering. You know what I mean? Like he does his own thing with the scooter, even though like, yeah, he's influenced by BMX, but he just rips it on a scooter. Like he, that to me, that's like, a nice like balance of like be- having influence from something but also making it like your own yeah 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 he reminds me a lot do you know the bmxer mike aiken oh yeah 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 Yeah, like i feel like grippy wears like the same hat shoes and like cut off jean shorts as that dude <laughs> like he, 
He looks like pretty similar to that guy when he rides too, because that dude just does like, like blast stuff to Fakie pretty much. Yeah, that, that might be. I don't know. Like, I, I can't say like I'm familiar with that um, BMX rider's like style. Yeah. Or like his riding way, but I do, I do know Matt Grippy like loves BMX videos and everything. So yeah, it could be. But I I think Grippy just. Dude, he's probably like my favorite person to ride transition with, also, because I can ride like those big quarter pipes, and he'll like ride them with me, you know? Yeah. And just full speed it, not being afraid, and I just like that's why I like riding like with people who ride differently, you know? Like, I don't like riding with people that ride do the exact same things I do, because then it's like, damn, we just film, we could like he's like he calls out the trick first, so I'm gonna do this or something, and it's like, damn, we're about to do the same thing, you know? Like it sucks, <laughs> <laughs> and, like we had the same idea, but then um. You're, like when you ride the grippy like the dude kills it and you're definitely gonna have it both like me and him are gonna have two different trick selections oh absolutely yeah so it's just like the perfect combination right there yeah so wa- watching your your video parts like um sort of like moving on from your early ones um i i kind of got remembered that you were like an early adopter of riding switch do you do you still feel like it's valid like it has a place in scootering like do you still do switch tricks i think there's certain things like uh parish and i were talking about that actually about like tricks that can be switched that no one has done yet right and yeah. that can be cool and the one we were talking about lately has been uh switch there is this is the thing that sucks about scootering like these explanation things it's really funny but it's <laughs> fakey so you're riding fakey but you're also riding switch and then half cap whip and land switch again and like there's certain things that I think can like you can I think switch back flip like that was the one I did a lot but mm-hmm. to me that wasn't that crazy like that was honestly like she that was like a like you want to back flip this rail but like you're not goofy so I'm just gonna do it you know like it's just whatever <laughs> and yeah. to me that one's not that crazy but um there's things like uh I I was doing recently like switch whip front feeble and like all just stay switched the whole time you know yeah I think like certain ways to do it but I, I think like you just can't take the easy route of like oh i'm gonna switch back lip or like switch board slide and stuff like that like i think if you like i think it'd be crazy to see someone like switch 180 whip over something like and land fakie and half cap out and stay switched the whole time yeah so tricks like where your feet are actually coming off the scooter yeah exactly because i think if they don't come off the scooter then it's not really like that much of a difference because our whole like our our um shoulders are facing forward but then our feet are just like sideways and i don't think it i think it's not that hard like even like switch threes and stuff like that it might feel uncomfortable but mm-hmm. i don't think it's that hard yeah yeah that makes sense what about uh like sex changes have you ever i don't i don't think i've seen you do many of those mm, no because uh, i saw uh i saw that like uh beef with uh mckean and uh connor way back in the day <laughs> <laughs> like oh dude I, like i was just like i don't know about the sex change i mean um the way mckean explained it to me one time was like like when skaters do big spins they you know like they switch their stance pretty much yeah and that's what he thought of too when he was skate like scootering it'd be like a big spin because he like switched his feet yeah and, like it makes sense but i don't know if i can like i think i did a actually in tilt two i did a meat spin because at that time i was getting into like arizona skateboarding and mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool, and it felt cool. But then I went, like, it was sick when I watched it, like, on the camera that day. Because I think you filmed it, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah it looked sick on that, that day. But then, like, when it was in the video, I was like, what the hell was that? Like, <laughs> I should have just, like, I should have just, like, uh, decade or something, you know? Like, yeah. That would have been way sicker. I was just like, what the hell was that, man? Yeah, there's, I don't know. I There's, like some situations where i feel like it can be cool especially if you like somehow link it with like two tricks and a line Mm -hmm. um i think like i want to say like it like brian chavez like he had a satori video and there was like two nine stairs or something in a row and i think he did like um what did he do he did like two 360 tricks and like there was a sex change in between but like i don't know it just made sense or like Sometimes like Christian will do, he'll do a hurricane, and then when he's coming out, do a sex change and like land in a manual, and then like switch whip out or I don't know, just stuff like that. Yeah, you know, it could be oh, man. I'm gonna say I watch. This is what I hate about uh, 
like I have I get these ideas sometimes, right? Of like what tricks to do. Yeah. And I say them, and I, since I don't scooter all the time, someone's gonna do it before me or something, you know? And I, <laughs> and like, I don't mind like whatever, get it, but at least like, yo, like, shout me out a little bit, like give me some credit, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> just give me a little credit, at least like where, where it came from. But uh, I was thinking like so like wall ride when you're wall riding, and then like switch your feet while still wall riding. That could probably look pretty cool. Oh like, yeah. Change to wall wall riding. Yeah, That'd be pretty sick. I think like you did that down like a set or something. That probably looked really cool. I always wanted to do a wall ride and then like push and go higher on the wall ride. Like just keep going. <laughs> oh, that'd be sick if you could just like keep yeah. going up. Yeah, I don't. You'd have to do it like right though. I think it could look kind of stupid, but if you if you somehow did it right, <laughs> it would look good. <laughs> look like you just tap the wall. Yeah, like if you actually were like getting higher from pushing i think it would look cool yeah if you also give it like a real nice like full push that yeah. probably look pretty sick too yeah as long as you don't just tap push <laughs> there's like people who like they're doing a line and like they want to go faster but they do like like they're already going fast but they want to push to make it look like they're about to go faster so they do like baby pushes but it really slows them down yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's just like oh no you should you just one good push that's usually what you need yeah or if it's like a fake push to slow down like really they do want to slow down <laughs> yeah exactly it's just like oh man you guys should just never push that all just get a little power slide in there or something there's so many like little funny like gimmicks that you can like i think once you like scooter for a long time you can like see why like what people did and why they did it you know yeah or like uh i always thought it was funny like when people would push really hard on flat ground and then do a power slide after they pushed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that one, that one's really good. I uh, for me, it's the transition one of like, what what is it like? People do in transition, they do a, uh, it's like they they start going really fast, right? Yeah. And then like they do like a lip slide, and then like they go like the, yeah, it's really long, but they go until like pretty much they stop. So it's like, but they keep going after that. It's like you gained all the speed, you lose it, and then you keep going and like the keep going as like you're doing a run still, you know? It's like. <laughs> That should have been the end of it or something. Like you should have just either like went faster or just ended it right there. Just like that's the lip slide and then you're out. Yeah. Yeah, just never I don't know, people change their speeds a lot and it's really funny to watch people do that. Just like going fast, slow, fast, slow. Yeah, I was like trying to think of all the sponsors you've had, which <laughs> are are kind of a lot actually. But Yeah. I don't know, sort of like a lot of them were like short. Um I was I don't know was your first real one ethic or was it like district and eagle <laughs> I mean it depends on like what you consider real you know like yeah you because that yeah <laughs> <laughs> you just kind of like made videos and then put their logo on it and that was it and yeah exactly. you got oh well you had a you had a sig eagle wheel didn't you yeah I, I still have them They're I in forgot my about that sure, yeah. damn yeah I still have them and then um some who was oh cam ward still had one too yeah and he he like do you want it and i was like oh no dude like you can keep it like i still got i got a full pair on in my house and then i think i was i think i gave one away to someone like recently damn <laughs> i just like yeah you can have it and he was like oh thank you so much but i can't remember who it was um mm. yeah i can't remember at all but I, I would say like my first real sponsor was probably ethic yeah i, I would hate like to like I mean, Scooter Zone helped me out a lot, and, like, they did a lot for me and everything, but um, as far as, like, feeling like, okay, I'm on a team now, like, this is what it, like, should feel like, like, I'm friends with everyone or whatever, mm -hmm. it was, like, eth Ethic for sure was it. Yeah. So, what, what was that like? Ethic was, it was super sick, man, like, talking to Kevin about, like, scootering and the way scootering works and, every, like, everything about it, mm -hmm. it was really interesting, like, to get his, like, perspective, because he was really into scooters, like, the... The, like designing of a scooter product and then also the scooter community and how it's gonna like like how long it's gonna last and everything and then um surreal he was just like surreal was so cool man he was just like he was like a he was like what's the best way to put surreal he was like a that cool stepdad you know who just wants to like be one of the boys <laughs> and like like he's just like because he didn't scooter but he'd be a mex but he just always wanted us to have a good time and get gnarly and like scooter and just scooter party that's what surreal wanted us to like do our whole life like that's that 
they just wanted us to scooter and party our whole life and like they were trying to like support us that's why they paid us so much like at first like i think at that time that was probably the most like a street rider was getting paid was it hard uh like since they were like a european brand was it hard for riding for them based in america with i don't know i guess just like communication and stuff like that Mm, no not really because uh like like i said surreal like I don't even know what time, like the time difference there, but whenever I messaged him, he would like respond right away. Mm-hmm. And um, usually Kevin, he didn't respond right away because most of the time he was like um, busy. Like he like he would this Kevin would stay up like all night just like knocking out scooter, like making new scooter parts on his computer and everything like that. Yeah, and like he was just always busy on that. But surreal, like when it came to anything, like I'd be like, Yo, surreal, can I like get this or surreal? What's our next trip we're doing? Like, can I get a little heads up on it? Like he was just instantly replying to me mm-hmm. the i think the only bad part was like when we were on actual trips it was hard for me to like really uh hang out with them all the time because they're like surreal's english was getting good kevin's english was pretty good no actually yeah surreal's was really good he had really good english and then kevin it was getting better overall on trips and then the riders they like knew a little bit yeah and like I should have probably like learned how to speak uh, French a little bit, but it, that was like so hard because they already all knew like a little bit of English, you know. Mm-hmm. But for me to fully learn like French just for that, I was like, dude, this is gonna be so hard. And then um, the filmer, he, he once uh, he came on, or he didn't like he was always there, but he was uh, his English is really good too. It was just it was just mainly weird because like when we went to Australia, it's like yeah we hung out, we had a good time, but then like. I was like, I'm gonna go in um, Kevin's car, you know, or um, Kevin. Uh, I'm blanking on his last name. Demay? No, not Demay. Uh, the Australian Kevin. The oh the Austin. Writer. Yeah, Kevin Austin. Yeah. I was like, I'm gonna go with them because like everyone in the car spoke English. I was already friends with them, you know. Like John was in the car all the time, and then um, Aaron too. Yeah. And I was just like, I can go in the van where like they're gonna play music and speak French, or I can go in the Australian car and speak English and joke around with everyone, you know? <laughs> so, like, I felt bad on some trips because, like, I definitely would do that, like, just hop in the English car just because I can actually like, finally talk and say whatever I need to say without having to, like, slow down or anything like that. Yeah. So how many how many trips did you end up doing? You did uh, that Australian one, and then you did the one in America sort of on the East Coast. Did you do any others? Mm. Well, from it all started because when I the first year I went to France, I was on district, right? Yeah. But I'm pretty sure I'm not 100 percent sure, but I'm pretty sure that Cyril and Kevin actually flew me out as dissidents. Like they just put me like they just like you're you're part of dissidents and we'll fly you out to France the first time. And I thought I thought district paid for me, but then when they flew me out, that's when they talked to me about ethic if I want to get on. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, dude, I'm down with Kevin. Kevin's super sick and everything. And then um, the second time, then they flew me out. Obviously, I was, I was on Ethic already, and they flew me out to France for the uh, Paris Jam. Then we went to – I think we went – did we do Australia or New York first? I think New York, right? Or the East Coast? I'm not sure. I just know you, like, did those two. Yeah, and then it was just one of the, those two. And then they were, when right before I left, they were in talk about uh, – uh, China for a little bit and then that's what I was t- like I was doing school so I couldn't leave mm-hmm. and so then I told them like yo I can't really go and then they're like oh come on and I was like oh it's school and they're like it's okay we'll, we'll find another time for us all to go that fits better for us and then I just told them like yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna get off it was mainly because I couldn't have source boards and I wanted to ride with Stefan on source so I told them like yo I'm gonna like ride source bars and I just yeah. want to ride what I want and just be fully part of tilt that's so I remember seeing the video the America one of the East Coast and it was like so random that all those like French guys and you were riding in like Richmond Virginia like <laughs> like how yeah. was it just because McKean was from there yeah okay yeah. So, um so we started off in New York and then they were like we're going to all these places and they're like we're gonna go to Woodward and everything right on the, the East Coast Woodward yeah and uh, we went there, and I was like, hey, like, did you tell them? Because, you know, like, they have to do background checks and everything. And they're like, no, it's fine, though. Like, they'll let us in. We're pros. And I was like, that's not how it works here, man. They got to do, like, background checks and everything. And, like, they just showed up to Woodward. We all did. And uh, 
they were like the Woodward staff was just like, you guys can't come here. Like you guys can look at the park, but you can't ride it, you know? Yeah. And they were just like super mad about that and everything. And then, uh, <laughs> so we just, they were like, well, we, where do you want to like, should we just go to Richmond now? And then, or to Matt. And so he hit up Matt. I was like, yo, um, we're going to come a little earlier if that's okay. And Matt was fine. And we just stayed with Matt. And that's when Matt was in a dorm or not. Maybe he was in a dorm. Yeah. Yeah. So the, they sent you to Paris for the street jam. Um, I, I've never been, but I've heard it's pretty crazy. Do you have any stories of, of that? Uh, the first year, the first year was like, I, I thought I was gonna have to like scooter a bunch, you know, do all this stuff. And that's when I like started just chill. Like I just realized I can just drink beer all the time. Cause I, and I was just drinking beer and that's when I met the, I believe they're Finnish, right? Odo and, um, Hail Mary. Yeah. Yeah. I think they are. Yeah. And, uh, that's when Odo was on tilt. And oh, okay, yeah. Tyler and Odo were getting along and then me and Odo were just like, we got along pretty well too, you know? And then, um. Uh, me and Odo, it was like, it had to be like two or three in the morning, and everyone's like slowly started dying down. Like everyone was wasted, and me and Odo were like, we need more beer and all this stuff. So like two, three in the morning, we go to this ATM, and it's like pouring rain, and it's like we go to the ATM, and then uh, we start walking around looking for a bar to be open. But this, like, it's like not in Paris. It's like a little outskirts of Paris. So like everything is just pitch black dark. So we're just walking around looking for a bar to get more beer in the like middle like at two three in the morning it's raining and i just like we couldn't do it and we get back and then like there we were just like we just nothing happened you know what i mean but we're just walking around thinking we're gonna find beer just fully wasted in the out of like a this this place we have never none of us knew where we were going paris wasn't like my crazy like i was still young so i didn't have like that many stories like that were like wild you know yeah well, I know just because everybody like slept in hammocks there, right? Just in like a warehouse and stuff. Yeah, he slept on hammocks, a ramp, a trampoline, <laughs> um, just whatever you could find, you know, pretty much. I remember uh, it had to be which one? It had to be the second one because that's when Blake was there. And uh, oh, that's actually all right. This is the story. This is a good story of Blake. <laughs> um, so this was the last year the Bercy was a five block, six block was going to be up. Oh uh, yeah, I, I don't know how many blocks. Yeah, I don't. It's big blocks though. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but so we're there, and everyone's riding for best trick, and like, I'm just drinking. I'm just like, I'm not gonna do anything down this for fun, you know. Like, I'm not gonna trick this, and maybe might might get a few hundred bucks, you know. I was like, there's no way I'm risking it. Yeah. And then um, so everyone's leaving to the next spot, and we're all just like, dude, we should jump it at least, you know. It's not gonna be here anymore. And so I go first, I jump Bercy, and I'm just like, all right, got it done, check. I just jumped it. And then Blake goes for it, and he, like, messed up his heel so bad. I think he, like, actually, like, fractured his heel doing it. Damn. Yeah, he messed up so bad, and we're just laughing, you know? Like, we're just laughing so hard, and Blake's over here, like, limping to every spot, and we're like, Blake, stop complaining, <laughs> and like, let's just drink more and all this stuff. And then um, we are just, like, we are just partying so hard the whole day and Blake like we were just telling Blake like Blake it's okay like just chill man you got a bruised heel that's all it is and then like he uh so like the the next day we like we partied all night and we didn't get any sleep so we ended up staying we didn't even go out the second night we ended up staying in the warehouse the whole second time and like we we're just like chilling on like this fun box and like taking power naps and everything and Blake's still like all hurt and then uh so Tyler Tyler's about to go to London and I got an offer to go to Denmark and then Blake's like trying to figure out what to do. Right. So me and Tyler, I don't, I don't know what me and Tyler did. We, uh, we went somewhere for a little bit and we come back and we're like, where's Blake? And everyone's like, Oh, he went home. And we're like, what? He didn't like say goodbye or anything. He literally just left because he didn't know if he should go to Denmark or anything. And his heel was hurting while we're making fun of him. And he just <laughs> left without like saying goodbye or anything. He just went home. Damn, he just flew home. He got a ticket and flew home. <laughs> yeah, I know. He just changed his flight like two days earlier or something uh, like okay. that. And we were just like, no, he. we thought everyone was messing with us, but he really just, he just went home. <laughs> Damn. I'm trying to think of like, yeah, because for me, like I was like, well, I was like 15, I was like 16 and 17 when I went to Paris. So like for me, I was still like, I was like kind of quiet and shy and didn't really want to like, I like drinking, but like not really like party party, you know? Yeah. So I was kind of just minding my own business the whole time and just doing my own thing. Mm -hmm. Do you think that 
like from going to that in the Chicago Jam, do you think like the Paris Jam is bigger than the Chicago Jam? Mm. Man, that's hard to say. Like the set cuz both the second years of the jams were insane. Like the, the difference of people that were there were just insane. Like the first both the first years are like, yeah, this is pretty crazy, you know, there's a lot of people. But the second years of both you're just like, wow, where did all this like come from, you know? Yeah. I think Paris is just a little more rowdier. Mm-hmm. Like they they literally don't care about rules. They do not <laughs> care. But in um Chicago, I think it's a little more like it's hard to say. Like honestly, I don't know. I I can't even compare the two. They're very different. Mm-hmm. Like in Paris, you're taking trains places and stuff like that, and the trains are just filled with like scooter riders like to different spots, you know. Mm-hmm. And like Chicago, you're riding everywhere. So like you're they're just taking up the whole street, you know. That's insane too. Yeah. So, so it's just I don't even know. Like I can't compare either of those two. They're both like very different and very like fun. I don't yeah. know why when I was like sponsored why I got flew out to them though. I never rode a single jam in my life. Like during the jam, like I just always sat back, got <laughs> drunk, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, because um a couple summers ago, like I went to a lot of jams in one summer. Like I went to the San Diego one, um, the Seattle one. And I had never really been to jams besides the Chicago one. And it just made me realize, like, Chicago was was so good compared to the other ones. Like, as far as the amount of people there and, like, you can just push from spot to spot and you don't have to, like, take a train or anything. Yeah, exactly. I think um, I've only done one in California, but the rest of them in California, I've never even, like, I like, when people say there's a jam, I'm like, in California, I'm just like, I'm not going, man. There's no way I'm going. Yeah, because you can't get anywhere. Like, you have to drive. Exactly, and it's just, I don't know, like, the spots they go to usually out here are just, I don't even know. Like, they're not, they're not like, anything I would even want to ride or anything. At least, like, Chicago, there's some things I'm like, okay, maybe I'll touch that, even though I never, I don't think it's Chicago Jam I touched anything. <laughs> but, um, like, in Paris, even Paris, they go to, like, gnarly spots and stuff like that. Like, I think Chicago definitely has the best, like, spot selection for everyone. Mm-hmm, yeah. Because I hate, I, what I hate about jams is that they take you to such gnarly spots, you know, and they have all these kids there. And it's like, dude, the kids, like, get the kids involved, you know? Like, you have their, your own riders winning the jams. Mm. Like, their own, like, you're, you guys sponsor this event and your own riders win it. Like, it's pretty much like a demo then, you know? Yeah. Like, just, like, let, let everyone else get a chance and, like, make their way, like, coming up, you know? Like, a no one. That's how a lot of riders are getting noticed now, though. Like, they go to these jams and just they blow up from like front 50 50 and the like huge stair rail you know that and instagram are the two ways of uh blowing up and scootering right now i think a lot of a lot of riders blow up at jams and then like people realize how gnarly they are and then um they get bigger on instagram that way that's how i've i've everyone new rider i've met i've been like oh i saw your like instagram or that instagram of you like killing it at the jam and then like look at them like six months later and they're just like 10k or something like that you know it's like sick for you man like that that's what jam should be about like these young riders or not even young just like no like people who don't have like any any sponsors or anything killing it at a jam making money like and then getting noticed that way yeah i think it's a, a really good option instead of like a competition because jams you can see i mean depending on the spot like if it's like a manual pad or something you don't have to jump down, you can see how people just naturally ride. It's not like they just do one try and that's like it. You can see people actually session something. So you get like a good feel for their riding. Yeah, exactly. I think, I don't know. I think it's like jams. If you just go only gnarly spots, like that's why I think every jam someone gets like insanely injured because <laughs> every spot is just like, that's what's gonna happen when 20 people like you get this hype i mean for me personally i wouldn't do jams because i'd rather film it than get like a few hundred bucks and people think i'm sick you know what i mean like yeah. like get all that hype and i also don't like all that pre- people watching me but like some people that's their time to shine you know what i mean like when mm-hmm. it, when people are there watching they like send it like i've never seen people send it that hard for filming but then when a jam comes around they're just like doing the gnarliest stuff i've never seen them do before i'm just like dude that's that's your style you know yeah yeah have you seen the um chicago jam 
I'm trying to remember. I feel like it was 2015 or 2016 when Nick Tedrick like 360 that double set. Do you see mm-hmm. that? I can't remember. Oh yeah, yeah. I I, I think so. Yeah. Think. Well, we like I I was with that that was basically like the last year that Colin organized the street jam, and he was just like. It was just so much work, and like with that and running tilt, he just got over it, and Tommy does it now. But I was with Colin when when he was like going to all the spots and planning them out, and it was one of those things where it was like the double set. I mean, it was so like it was probably like a ten flat ten or something like that, like somewhere around there. And he was and he was just like, should I like actually put this in the jam as a spot? Like, is it safe? You know, like. <laughs> There's, exactly. there's like a line you got to draw because like people will just try stuff like even if they don't really know how to scooter <laughs> yeah exactly and it's terrifying to watch people do that like they don't you watch them like going as fast as possible and they're getting speed walls from just pushing <laughs> and then they're trying this like huge set and it's just like dude no and then yeah. they somehow make it and i'm like oh thank god like oh yeah, there were, I mean very few people session that but I think there were like one or two kids that just tried to jump it and you could tell like they just had no speed and like somehow made it to the bottom but like exploded and when they were at the bottom <laughs> yeah i think um because remember when seattle i don't know if they still do it but washington had a jam yeah they i mean at least a couple summers ago they had one and i was there okay yeah because i went to one kingsley sent me out to one and um what did okay so you know that uh what's the garfield right that's that school with the wall and the, yeah 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 so i remember alex deadman was there and he was like ralph you should uh disaster that like w- the right up wall and i was like oh that'd be sick and like, yeah yeah do it and then like if you win money you'll probably win money from that and then also like we can buy beer tonight because that's what if i did anything i was like it's for like beer money i was like dude i'll buy all the beer if i get like a hundred bucks <laughs> and then um i disastered it and like then everyone started going even crazier from then like everyone just started jumping off these huge things and i was like damn i'm not gonna win and i'm kind of bummed because i was really sick and i wish like i could have filmed that you know instead yeah yeah that would have been so much cooler in my tilt part than at the jam and ever since then i was like no like if i see something that i want to do at a jam i'm not gonna do it at a jam i'll just call it out like yo next day can we like go there so i can film it yeah, it's always a fine line. Like, I remember that dude, uh, Kenny Yap, like, he would do the craziest stuff at the Paris Street Jam, but when his video parts came out, it was just kind of like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I think I think that's the thing. Like, I'm, I'm, I, I think even with me, like, for a while, like, I didn't know how to, like, what tricks to film. Like, I think Nick Darga would just tell me tricks for the longest time, and then Tyler would tell me what tricks to do, and then uh, Alex would tell me what tricks to do. I just did them. Like, it wasn't even, like, me being me, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, I was just like, okay, guys, if you guys think it's sick, I'll do it. Like, um, the part where uh, I360 double with, like, the two flat, two flat, two. Yeah. I, I'm i pretty sure Josh, or I think I did three whip, and then Josh Young and Alex and were like, you should do 360 double. And I was like, okay. And I just, like, did it for them. Yeah. And it's, like, it wasn't me. And uh, I think that's a lot of thing with scootering. It's, like, at least the uh, people who told me what tricks to do. They had a good like selection you know what i mean mm-hmm. but i think scooter riders really need like scooter coaches like most of them at least in my mind like when it comes to video parts they just like they huck it and then they do like the lamest stuff and then they huck it again and it's like it's so mixed and it's like dude you're just a hucker just stay hucking it like take <laughs> take six more months to film this video part of only hucking it yeah or you know <laughs> don't film that like little stuff because you're a hucker it, it makes the video boring when you just huck chill huck chill and it's like if you take six more months you'll you'll make a full huck video and it'll be way sicker yeah yeah no that's that's totally right i there's so many people with like the the sort of like raw talent but they don't know what to do with it i i I get them i fully understand them i was just lucky enough to have like mainly alex was like my my like scooter coach you know what i mean and like (laughs) his ideas are like so good i like even at woodward and i was like I was like 12 or 13 and he's like telling me what tricks to do at Woodward to learn. And I'm like, why don't you try them? He's like, Oh, I can't do that, but you can. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> and like his tricks were just so sick. Like every single one he taught me, I was like, 
like so stoked on them, you know, and there's like little shindigs that no one's probably done before or something, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, then, that's true. I remember Alex would like always tell people what to do. <laughs> yeah, and, and he gives really good ideas, like really sick ideas. And I was lucky like that. I just if Alex wasn't around, I'm like, what would Alex tell me to do here? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's crazy. But then like now, like right now, I don't know. Because every time scooter riders like see me, they're like, oh, oh, Ralph, like your tilt one is like the sickest part and all this stuff. And I'm like, dude, tilt one was OK. Like. I watched like recently my all my video parts just to like see like how like my difference you know like how much I've been in scootering yeah and I watched it my tilt one I'm like dude I look like like a scooter kid like I have no like maybe at that time people thought that was like style me personally I'm just like dude I look like just a kid like I don't know what I'm doing like it doesn't look good and I think with like tilt two I'm like that's what I want to look at like more like I want to look like more like my tilt two part because I think that's when my style is like was the best uh huh. And it's mind blowing that people don't understand like that concept of like kid style versus like adult style still. Yeah. So I, I guess well we haven't really talked much about tilt. So you mentioned like when you were on Ethic, you just kind of started to ride source parts and tilt parts, um, and then like it. So that's just kind of like the parts you wanted to ride, and then. Did it just kind of work out after that? Um, like getting on tilt. Yeah, yeah. Um, pretty well. I, I was on ethic at first, and then Tyler was like, "Yo, do you want to be on tilt? That'd be sick, you know." And then I was like, "Yeah, that'd be sick." And then like twenty minutes later, Colin called me and was like, "Yo, dude, like, so I was just talking. Like, it was the first time I ever talked to Colin before." Yeah. He was like, so I was just talking to Tyler, and uh, we were talking about putting you on the team and stuff like that. And I was like, oh, I was like, yeah, I'm super down and everything. And then I think, like, finally, like, hanging out with those dudes, I was like, damn, like, I just want to fully be part of this team. Not even just, like, I get a few parts from them, and, like, I'm just kind of on the team, but not, like, you know? Yeah. And I was just like, dude, I just want to fully be part of this. And that's when, um, I'm trying to think. I think you were here when we all did that, like, wall I think Isaac Wall rode over us. Yeah, yeah, I I was there. That was that was a crazy session. Like yeah, just yeah. so much stuff happened in that schoolyard that day. <laughs> yeah, and then we went to Arizona after. Oh, okay. I, I don't I didn't I didn't go to Arizona with you guys, but I I think that was like the beginning of like the first time I'm with the Tilt dudes and I was just like I want to be part of this like fully cuz I thought it was going to like that that was like going to just take over scootering right there. Like Tilt and it, it kind of did when at that time like Tilt was just the team at the time. Yeah, I think it totally did. Yeah, so I was super stoked, like, just on everyone on Tilt. So I was like, dude, this is, like, even to this day, I mean, I still think, like, I like it sucks to say even now, but I don't think I've ever been, like, as stoked to be actually part of a team as, like, being on Tilt. Mm -hmm. Tilt was, like, the one that got away, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Me and Colin just grew up very differently, you know? Like, mm -hmm complete different things like same with fiend stress we we just all had to like me and fiend stress probably had the closest closest like background like just hanging out skaters getting drunk you know mm. and i think it bummed calling out like a lot a lot of the time when we're just like oh we're not trying to film we're just trying to drink or something you know like of course he would he's our manager he wants us to film 24 7 yeah but i i also think he didn't like scootering you cannot put like a like trips you cannot be like you guys all got to film like 20 clips or whatever amount you know like you just got to let people be them you know mm -hmm. and just let them like if they don't want to film like you can't get bummed because they don't like the spot or something or whatever and i mean it's probably completely different as a manager like perspective like owning the team and everything like you you probably do want to motivate these guys that only want to film but as a rider especially at like young age just hanging out with a bunch of like the boys just everyone just wants to drink you know and party yeah, I remember there were at that schoolyard that day, um, Eric did a nose manual back 180 web out on a picnic table and nobody was filming it. And then when he tried to film it, like he just couldn't land it at all. So then he he did a nose manual 180, I think. And I think that was like what was in his part. <laughs> yeah, I mean, Eric was probably like one of the sickest dudes. Like he just he didn't need a camera to do a trick like he tested the waters first and usually testing the waters he got really close and then when he came to filming like if he got it he usually got stuff pretty fast but if he didn't like he would like probably eat the most shit 
besides Isaac. <laughs> but he would he would eat shit just like he's doing that nose manny 180 whiff. I remember that. And then um he just like still would get up and stuff. Like, he was like the most mellow dude ever though. He would never get mad really or anything. Like, yeah. I was just like, dude, how do you not get frustrated trying these tricks? <laughs> he just he just kept going. I don't know. Like Eric probably was like one of the like closest teammates I had on till like at the start of it. Mm-hmm. So I think as soon as like it was Tyler and Eric, but then I think as soon as you got on, I was like motivated all over again, and I was like, dude, I'm so stoked to ride with Dylan. He's gonna film everything, and I was super stoked. Yeah, I was. I remember. I remember too. Like I think. I think you called me or something like saying that you're about to be part of tilt and i was like dude that's gonna be so sick because i went from like being like hanging out with the drinkers on tilt to like you know hanging out with you and just wanting to film and like straight to take scootering like more serious and like scooter my way finally and like talk to you about like tricks and everything just complete like opposite of like what i wanted to do on like tilt one and everything yeah <laughs> that's funny yeah yeah i was super stoked when you got on and then I wasn't that stoked when because we just live so far it just sucked riding by yourself out here yeah yeah for sure so what do you think like ultimately like what what was it after tilt two like was it just that in like you living in riverside like isolated i mean it's like it's hard to do anything there right like did you just get like super unmotivated after that that's when I started skating like really hard because all my friends skated right, and we yeah. would go to like um, the active headquarters and stuff. And I can't scooter there. I had to skate, you know. And they're like, I wanted to hang out with those dudes, so I was like, all right, I'll skate. And then I started skating like there a lot, and then I like realized like I can actually skate better. Like I could start doing like rails tricks now, like and everything. And then um, like we, like I went to the barracks one time, just like a private session with just a few of my friends, like just us four there only, and uh. Like, I can't bring my scooter in there. So I was just like, you know, I just got to skate more and skate more. And I didn't have anyone to really scooter with at that time. Like, Tyler, I think, was that semester at C. Um, Stefan, I think he was just, like, mainly working and stuff. Like, I don't think he was trying to scooter that much. Or he had an injury, maybe, too. But um, just everyone else. And I didn't really want to scooter with anyone else because I was just so comfortable. Like, me, Tyler, and Stefan, like, that's just how it, things get done that way when it's just us three. Yeah. And when I, when I went with other people, it was just, like, we go to some lame spots that I don't want to hit or something like that. Like it was just like a waste of my day. Cause I spent gas money hanging out with everyone. But then at the end of the day, I didn't film anything cause I didn't think any of the spots were sick. Yeah. And when I, when I skated with everyone, it was just, those are my friends, you know, like it made me like, those, those are just like my really good friends who skated. And so I started skating pretty hard. And then like, I was like, why? Like, I don't know. Like I just didn't want to scooter that much. Cause I didn't have someone to film me first off. And then, um, I remember even with Tilt 2, like, even, the, like, towards the end of Tilt 2, I was, like, skating a lot harder because Colin sent me the HVX, and I was like, cool, man, thank you, but who's going to film me still? Like, you, I have an HVX, but who's going to film me? Yeah. And so, like, it's funny because I think with the Tilt 2 HVX is, uh, I used, we used, I, like, went with my skater friends all the time to, like, we try to go filming, but I think, I think they, we used most of the camera for skate footage. <laughs> like filming them and it's funny because it's in like the, I, every time I watch like my friend um, Nolan's skate part and I show scooter riders like yo this is my friend Nolan he's so sick and I'm like oh that, that clip right there was filmed with the tilt camera like, that's with the <laughs> HBX like I was there and like everything and it was really funny but yeah I just didn't like I didn't have any motivation and then um, you came out for a week right yeah so, yeah some summer it was uh, and then Eric did too Oh, and, yeah. and Jordan, yeah. Oh, yeah, Jordan came. Jordan left early, right? I can't, rem- I can't remember, but... Yeah, but I remember just knocking out so many clips with you, and it was, like, super easy. Like, it's just, like, I have someone to film me, someone who, like, likes, like, who's down to hit the same spots as me, or at least go to my spots, you know? Yeah. And it was just super easy, and I think I, like, stacked probably, like, most of my Tilt 2 clips in that time. Yeah, yeah, I think you did. <laughs> yeah, and I was just, like, that's all I needed was just, like another person pretty much you know because mm-hmm. I, I remember we were talking and we're, like when eric went to go buy beer i mean you're like dude eric is just not riding a scooter at all yeah and we're, uh, we're just like i think he's done you know and i was like yeah and then pretty much just not having people around like to scooter with just made me just not want to scooter because i don't know it was just i, I could have scooted that whole time with my skate friends but i think like i i didn't ever want them because they were trying to make it in skateboarding 
And I didn't ever want to like run into a bunch of like skaters and like blow their chance. Like, oh, this skater hangs out with scooter kids. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I never wanted to do that to my friends, but they're always like, dude, bring your scooter, bring your scooter, and like tell me what tricks to do. And like, they're trying to give it. was funny though, because they would just take me to really gnarly rails all the time. Like, <laughs> I, I'm not going to do a 14 rail right now. They're like, come on, tail flip slide it. I'm like, no. <laughs> That's not how it works, man. It was um, really fun. Yeah, because since Tilt 2, I like you've been in montages like the Helligrip videos and then the northern videos um so so what is i don't know i guess like what is your your life like after tilt too like were you were you bummed about getting off tilt or was it did you like understand it i i understood it you know like definitely i wasn't like motivated or anything but yeah. um i i was just kind of bummed because i pretty much said like dude like i want a scooter still but i like i just don't there's no one to scooter with you know like and colin just like not understanding that all i needed was just a little motivation or something you know like yeah that kind of just bummed me out that part but like i'm, I'm not gonna be like sit there and argue with him like i've been filming my whole like this whole time or like i scooter all the time i told him like yeah i don't really scooter that much it's just there's no one to scooter with and i don't like scootering by myself honestly mm -hmm. and and um I understood it but then like right after that it's funny because i think right after tilt 2 i think everyone was just like oh ralph was just skating because that's all i posted on instagram was me skating like i'm learning new tricks why would i post me scootering doing the same tricks that i always do you know like i, I want to post me like doing something new on instagram and then uh so everyone just like ralph is done ralph was done and then uh i moved to arizona and hanging out with the pg dudes i like at first like when i first moved to arizona those are like my only friends were the like, scooter kids yeah so like I, of course I scootered all the time like with them at first when I first got there I was scootering a lot and then I ended up hanging out with like a few like the skater Nico and then uh, I would skate with I was like yeah, he let me live with him and I started skating a little bit more again and then um, then I became friends with like all these like other kids in Arizona that are just like they just wanted to party all the time and like they're all in bands and there's like house shows and stuff so I like completely stopped skating and scootering and I was just like hanging out with like really cool people all the time and like having like good time actually just hanging out with people you know mm. and so like i just wasn't getting anything done like skating scootering wise i was just meeting really cool people all the time and and then when i came back to california what did because once i moved back i'm trying to, I, I think like i came back and then i like started skating still with all because all my friends skated so i was just like all right i'm going back to skating when i'm out here and then I'm trying to think like i ran into like chris and or there's like a like a little a little jam at this skate park called Harupa and I ran into Chris and John there and then I was on a scooter I just wanted to hang out with the scooter riders you know see who was all there and everything so I went and hung out with everyone and I remember John like I was just it, like it's like I never stopped scootering like it just felt all the same you know mm -hmm. and so John was like dude I don't know why Colin kicked you off and I was like oh thanks man like at least at least like someone thinks I'm still decent you know <laughs> and like it was really cool because everyone just thought I completely like just didn't scooter anymore and stuff like that and I was like no I'll scooter but and that's when the whole affinity opportunity came and like me hanging out John and Chris more yeah so how how did affinity work out I, I know you you worked for them were, were you like officially like riding for them yeah like because I remember I worked for them for a little bit and like I remember John and Chris like always messing around like oh you're like on affinity you're on affinity right mm -hmm. and I was like yeah I'm down and then like one day I think it was Chris and he's like are you actually down to be part of affinity like ride for us and I was like yeah and he's like okay sick I didn't think you wanted to be part of it but like yeah like that's super sick you're on the team I guess and then like that's pretty much how it came on like while I was working there oh, okay. and uh yeah it was I don't, I don't know what's going on over there right now because I've just been so busy working this at uh, active right now yeah. So I just don't really see the dudes. I don't scooter that much, but um, I don't know. Like, I don't, I have no idea what's going on over there right now. Like, just for a while, we kind of, everyone just kind of like the communication kind of just stopped like going around and everything. So I I just like I don't know. I don't really take anything. Like the older I get, I just don't take things like heart and like I hope they're not bummed on me or anything because like just no communication. But mm. I just like I'm I just don't have the time to like scooter like that right now. Like I just. To me, scootering is just, it's when I want to do it, and I'm going to scooter how I want to scooter, like, that's it, you know? Yeah. And so, I I hope I hope they're not bummed on me or something. I, I honestly have no idea. I haven't talked to any of the, like, affinity dudes in, like, two to three months, maybe. 
Yeah. yeah. So it's like, I'm super stoked on those dudes. I think like Affinity, it's crazy how they went from like just bars to being like one of the sickest like bar companies out there and like sickest teams, you know? Mm. I think, yeah, I think that's like super rad what they're doing. And Chris and John both have like really good mindsets of what they just want the riders to like always be like, you know, you got a job, you got a place to stay. You like, we just want, we like, they would like for their riders to get paid more and stuff like to only get paid, but it's hard in scootering, you know, Mm -hmm. they all have like, they, they, that's what they want. And they like, they don't mind if you like don't scooter. It doesn't mean you're off the team. It just means like you're busy right now. You got shit to do. And that's how they look at it. They're like, they don't just like, oh, you're off the team because you're not riding. They're just like, you got to, you got your hand in your life. We're not paying you, you know, to be a scooter rider. So you just do you. Yeah. And yeah, those dudes are just like, they're like one, like the sickest dudes I've ever met for like, when it comes to like understanding, like I can't scooter right now. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Who all, uh, work for them? Like as far, it was, it's all scooter riders, right? Yeah. Every, everyone, everything at affinity was scooter ride. Like, scooter they do ride scooters or they used to at least like the jake yeah. show was there for a while and he he he's rode scooters way before any of us probably did at the he went to that like really old contest i didn't even like know he scootered like that before but uh he went to uh, uh i wasn't it was like before cooter con in like washington oh like, uh thrill zone yeah he went to the thrill zone competition yeah yeah, he went there and like became friends with all like Corey Moss Rucker and all them. Mm. And uh, I didn't know that. I just met him at Harupa one day, like when I was, I had to be fifteen, and I was just like, "Oh, you're pretty sick, dude!" Like he just rode like with style, like that's it. Like a Stan Smirnoff at the time, you know, when Stan was like super sick and like super stylish. Yeah. So he rode just like that, and I was like, "Dude, you're super sick! Like, where are you from?" Like, and he told me he's from California, and then we became friends, and then. When I lost communication with sco- all the like scooter riders, pretty much, um, yeah, I think he just stopped scootering as well too. Like he he had life stuff to do too, and then uh, we both just started working at Finney together. And it was super sick to just catch back up and like hang out all the time and just talk about scootering and everything. And so like everyone at Affinity scootered out like because I don't want to say like John and like when we went to Vegas, Chris was an insane skill. He like Superman back scooter flipped like he was killing it in Vegas. And he, like, doesn't touch a scooter ever, but he killed it, you know? Yeah. And then uh, John, he, he'll ride with us sometimes at the park. And I think, the, like, he just rides, like, the ledge. But I've seen him do, like, backflip double with, like, pretty, like, probably in the, this year at least, you know? Yeah. Like, but he just, they just don't do it 24-7, obviously. But mm-hmm. everyone there, like, yeah, does ride, like, still casually. So when I, when I was watching your video parts, it reminded me, like, how I feel like with every video part is, like, a clear line in your style changing um like that video part um that was on trend kill that you were talking about and then your tilt one part and then your tilt two part so were there like moments in time where you were just like really influenced by something you're like okay i want to like ride like this or dress like this yeah i think um like, cause I I was really young, so I think at like a young age, whatever's co- you get influenced, you know, you think something's yeah. cool, that like you're just super influenced. So like the trend kill part, I like that's the state gold stuff, you know. I was writing like Americas and stuff like that. I thought state gold was like the coolest thing ever. And then um, till I think till one, that's when like the whole Dylan Reader was popping, you know, like Alien Workshop was super sick and everything. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, this dude's so sick, like and everything. And I was like. So like that that was my influence then and then tilt two was a little mixture between like Arizona skating and like me being me finally, you know? Mm-hmm. And then um that's just like how my transitions went. It was just whatever was cool at the time, like and I would like just go with it, you know. And then um with scootering, like obviously I'd like think of like skate the way I I'd like to skate, you know. But since it was a scooter, I try to do my own stuff too. And then a lot of that stuff, like trend kill part to tilt one a lot of it is like people just calling tricks out for me to do and stuff like that like you should do this you should do that yeah and like i think in tilt one there's like a few things that i was like like i think tilt one there's like a handful of clips that i'm actually stoked on like i know like that's probably like skill wise the best stuff i'll probably release but like stoked wise like what i think looks good and everything like i think it's like that um front front three hill over the flat gap 
I think that's like a trick I called out and like I was like super down for it, you know? Oh, and then like this 50 50 and this like out ledge in um, tilt one. I think I'm, I was super stoked on that because it was just like, I don't know, I thought that looked really cool. That's about it. Like, because tilt one was really rushed for me because I also I was like slacking and then like last, last like month of filming for it, I just like did it everything I could, you know, just yeah. sent it as much. Even that like grass gap. Because that's what everyone like is super stoked on. Every time they talk to me about Till One, it's a grass gap or Wallenberg. Those are the two things people talk to me about. <laughs> and I'm just like, both of those I didn't really want to do. Like, the front three Wallenberg, I just wanted to jump Wallenberg, and then I fell jumping it. And I was like, you know, what? I think I'll front three it just to like say I got a trick on it. I, di- I didn't even call out like I want to go to Wallenberg. It just we went to Wallenberg. Yeah. And then the grass gap, Colin. I remember like it was probably like three months before that SF trip. He was like. Dude, I found the sickest grass gap. Like, this skater ollied it, and, like, I don't think you can do it, but I want to show you it. And I was like, what do you mean I can't do it? If skater did it, why can't I do it? And then he was like, I just don't think you can, Ralph. Like, it's gnarly. And, I like, you know, in my head, I'm like, it's probably not that gnarly, you know? <laughs> and then we go there, and this thing is massive. And I was like, it wasn't more the fact I wanted to do it. It was more like, I want to show Colin I can do this. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, I don't know, man. I just want to show you. It's it'd be so sick if you did it, but I, I don't like you know like if you don't do it, I understand it's gnarly. And so like he took me to it, and I was like the whole way there, I'm just like, yeah, it's probably not that gnarly. It's not that gnarly. And then it's like because he just kept saying grass gap, and I'm like thinking grass gap, you know. And then when I get there, the, it's a full on bush, and and then you're bombing a hill after, and I was like, dude, this isn't even a real spot. There's no way someone ollied this. And he's like, <laughs> no, someone did, and I was like. All right, man. And then Jonah and uh, Connor, I was just like, let's get this over with, guys. And I just started sending it. And, like, I just, just jumped to the side, get, comfor- get comfortable. And then um, there's, like, a in the B, B section, and, like, I jump and I throw my scooter and my scooter goes flying down and I, like, land. That was, like, the first one I fully, like, actually tried the jump. Mm-hmm. And I, after that one, I was like, okay, I got it. And then I just, I just did it. I was like, okay, that's cool. Like, it felt cool, but, like, it wasn't on my, like, I wanted to do it. I was just like, I just got to show Colin. I can do this at least. Yeah. But yeah, tilt one, I didn't really like a lot of that. Like I didn't want to film most of that. It was just probably me trying to knock stuff out or have at least a gnarly part. Cause that was the premiere. One. We knew it was going to be premiered and I was just like, people are going to watch this. And I'm kind of like, I don't, I don't know. I thought I was like 16, 17. When that, no, I had to be 18. Mm-hmm. For, yeah. Cause I had a cigarette clip in tilt one. <laughs> so yeah, I was like, well, filming it, it went from like 16 to 18. I just didn't want to bum people out at that point, you know? Mm-hmm. And, then, and then Tilt 2, of course, I was just like, I don't care if I bum people, like, if people aren't stoked, you know what I mean? Like, I just want to ride my scooter. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it's always good. It's like, what's the point of doing it if people are just telling you what tricks to do and then you're doing them? Like, it's not really your riding coming through. Yeah, exactly. I, I like, right now, like, I finally understood that and it took me so long. And I, I think a lot of people till this day, like, still don't, like no matter how old they are or how pro they are, whatever they, how many followers they have, I still don't think they understand like how they want to ride yet. I think like every, I think every scooter rider is still finding that out for themselves. Yeah, totally. Because you kind of just see what is popular or what people like. And obviously you want to do that. So people have like a positive reaction to you, but I think it creates a lot of people doing the same tricks. Yeah, exactly. And I think that's where scootering is at right now. It's like everyone's doing the same stuff, you know, like, I don't know. I think a lot of people just want to do like what's cool for everyone right now. Like, I think every video I go on Instagram and watch an Instagram video, most of them are like these new SoundCloud rappers. And like, I get it. Like that stuff, you know, like that's what's cool for you guys right now. Like that's the trend. I get it. Mm -hmm. But every single person's doing it right now. Like it's very rare, like to see like someone being kind of different in scootering right now. I mean, it's just that point. I mean, we're still, like, I think scootering is just at that point where once, because everyone, like, in skateboarding, you got to think, like, skateboarding, there has always been, like, so many different genres of skateboarding. Like, th- throughout skateboarding, there's always been, like, a complete different style of skaters, and they can, like, separate, you know? Mm-hmm. And, and, like, I bet I bet you, like, in the 90s or, like, early 2000s, like, not every skater got along. Like, they probably were like, oh, I don't really like that dude. I just won't hang out with him, you know? Yeah. And I think with scooter riders they all expect because we scooter we all have to like each other like you know what i mean like like we have to be friends because we scooter it's like dude sometimes people just don't get along and it's okay like just you scooter and i scooter and like that's it like 
we like we don't have to be best friends we can just like oh hey how's it going man and then like you know that's it but like but you don't we don't have to be like best friends because we scooter and i think i think that's the hardest part for scooter riders i think because they get so much hate at the skate parks of like people people like denying them and stuff like that like you know like skaters like just like oh scooter kids or whatever and then uh like so when it comes to a scooter rider who doesn't even like a scooter rider i think they take it to heart you know mm-hmm. and it's just like oh you don't have to take it to heart man it's just some like you know it's like it's like music i don't want to listen to every kind of mu- like all the music that's out there so i just don't and it's same with like watching video parts like i don't want to watch every scooter rider ride it's yeah just, because it look it all looks the same to me like i'm just like it's probably the same stuff like there's probably a whip front board in there, a whip board slide, and then like some big sets, and then that's about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's like, that's how I look at scootering at least. And it sucks to say that I look at it that way, but I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't want to like watch something that doesn't get me hyped, you know? Like, all the all the new tilt stuff has got me, gets me pretty hyped to ride and everything. It makes me actually kind of bummed out because I'm not part of it anymore, but <laughs> it's sick still. <laughs> yeah, I think it's, uh, I don't know. It, it seems to be going well. I mean, it's like a balance of Colin trying to like appeal to the younger kids by making um, sort of videos like geared towards them. But it's just it's so cool to see. I mean, the people who still remain on tilt, just seeing them like still passionate about it when they're like older and still making time for it. And also like how their riding keeps evolving. Like it was just so cool over the summer to be in Minnesota with people and just like like with tom it's like dude i've been riding with you for like six years or something like it's just crazy that we're still here doing this yeah no it's super sick to see everyone like everyone on tilt still like kill it like um that mid lane you guys dropped yeah yeah that that thing was so sick like seeing like being there with those guys from tilt one to tilt two Mm -hmm. and then like seeing that mid lane and then um just seeing how different people ride and like style wise everything and it was like so sick to see you know what i mean like it was just like dude these guys are even sicker now like i didn't even <laughs> think that was possible you know and it's just like so sick to see everyone on tilt like killing it like i i think i still think tilt probably has like the sickest team and sickest videos out right now uh yeah I, I, yeah probably <laughs> I, yeah that's just that's just my my like opinion on it i don't know i i get i don't want to say i get bummed on scooter teams but like you can just tell what they're doing. They're getting like the best teams, you know, the best riders and like just the gnarliest stuff. And like, that's cool. You know, like that's your guys' style, but like, that's, that's not why I scooter. I just want to see like someone look good on a scooter. I just like, it's nice to see like all these people look the same and like, that's cool. Like, you know, scootering doesn't look as kiddish anymore. It's really cool, but it's always really cool to see that. Like, you know, that those like riders that are like really sketchy, but then like, they're sick to watch yeah <laughs> that that's like so sick like you, not everyone has to be like very clean like and everything you know like uh-huh. it's so sick to see that one sketchy rider like that person that stands out all the time so, and you can also tell with like when they're trying to just like push the the kids too hard you know like just trying to get kids views and stuff like that yeah you for sure can um so what is it like riding for daniel cardenas's company northern because that's like a huge crew of like all these different types of people yeah i think um daniel himself is like one of the best like managers like like as like an owner like a team like he owns the company everything and like everything he does for us daniel kills it like he literally sent me on a trip like he didn't even send me like he was like yo ralph um I want to make like individual videos with everyone and like however you want to do it, you know? And he's like, I'm thinking about Paris filming you. What do you think about that? And I was like, yeah, I'm super down for Paris to film and edit it. Like Paris kills it. And he was like, where do you want to go? Like, do you want to go East coast? Like, what do you want to do? And I was like, honestly, I want to go to Ventura. I've been wanting like to go to Ventura for so long. And I know people up there who know spots up there and like no one ever wants to go to Ventura. It's only, it's the same distance from Riverside to San Diego, but just North pretty much, you know? Yeah. And he was just like, all right, dude, if that's what you want to do. And, like, he was down to send me to the East Coast, wherever I, like, pretty much, like, you know, wanted to go. And I'm just like, no, dude, I just want to stay in California, Ventura. I want to do something that I'm actually, like, stoked on. Because, like, I can go to the East Coast and, like, probably be stoked. But, like, I don't know what's going to happen, you know? Like, I can't promise you, like, I'm going to get clips. But if we go to Ventura, I can promise you I'm going to get clips. And so we did it. And it was just four days. 
of just straight filming and he i was like dude i want these kids i know they're not northern but can like these two kids be in the video with us and he's like however you want man however you want the video he just let me have like full control mm-hmm. and i was so stoked and like he he didn't plan on like he he was like yeah i thought like he he took me there right he drove and everything and he didn't plan on getting any clips he was just like i was gonna let you do your thing i was like no i want you to be part of it too like you're part of it and even parish i like parish i want you to get some clips too man both of them didn't think they were getting clips like yes they saw a spot and they wanted to get a clip they're gonna get it but save it yeah. And I was like, no, I want you guys part of the video. Like, I want everyone that's in on the trip, like, to be part of the video. Like, and it was just super sick to, like, have my say finally in something, you know? Mm-hmm. But I feel like a lot of teams, they just kind of, like, get clips. We'll do the editing and we'll do this. We'll do this. We'll we'll pick the spots for you. And it's like, I had a full say on everything, like, on that trip. And, it, like, he's doing that for every single person on Northern. Like, where do you want to go? And, like, who do you want to be part of your video? And how do you want to do it? Like, he's letting everyone decide their own stuff. Yeah, and yeah. he he just, he just wants to focus on like individuals first because he's been really busy with the a lot of stuff. So he just wants to like make sure everyone's happy and like get it done. You know. Mm-hmm. I always think it's so cool when videos actually reflect the experience rather than like separating people's clips and then it's like used for a bunch of different videos. Yeah, yeah. No, I agree. Um, another thing with Daniel he motivates me probably more than anyone else I've ever scootered with because like he does own the company you know and right now I don't know I know you have Instagram but I don't know if you like actually like do anything like go on it or anything no not really okay well everyone right now is just like support writer own support writer owned you know super hard they're doing it super hard but it's like these writer these these companies who are writer like are this like come any company that is writer owned most of the time like that person who owns the company when they have free time they don't want a scooter and Mm -hmm. it's like why would that be my motivation is when their free time they don't want a scooter so why like on my free time would i want a scooter too you know yeah but with daniel it's like this kid it's 110 degrees in arizona and if he has the time he will scooter like that's (laughs) what he wants to do you know what i mean yeah and it's like that is the most motivation it doesn't care if it's a skate park a curb just flat ground he just wants a scooter and it, it like brings out the scooter kid in me again like where i'm just like dude we'll just sesh flat ground for like two hours and then we're happy you know <laughs> like we're stoked and i think that's like the sickest thing about daniel he motivates me more than probably like anyone else and i think i think a lot of people should realize when they say like support rider own like yeah that is good but like the people who own the company also ha- should want a scooter especially when they know how to a little bit you know mm-hmm. and i think that's the biggest motivation you can give any team rider is just look on my free time let's all get together and scooter you know mm-hmm. yeah like it, doesn't have to, it doesn't have to be filming like let's just scooter like just a curb or something like we'll, we'll get along you know yeah but their free time most of the time most company riders i know like they just they don't want to scooter on their free time they want to do something else mm-hmm. but i understand too they probably spend all day like trying to make a part trying to like you know they work on scooters all day like they want a little break from it on their free time Yeah, that must be pretty tough. I mean, I've seen it happen to like Colin and Andrew. Like when you're when you're working like all day long, every single day on scooters, it's like the last thing you want to do is go scooter. (laughs) Yeah, it's just it's just mind like not mind blowing, but like I don't know. Like as a I don't whatever Daniel's doing, I just think I just like what he's doing so much. Just the fact that like he will like i'll be like oh dude i'm not really feeling it and he's like well what do you want to do then you know what i mean like let's do something like he just wants to like hang out like and just actually be friends you know yeah i feel like when it comes to like scooter riders it's like we're scooter friends that's how i look at scooter riders like we're scooter friends that's it yeah it's it's definitely hard to find people that ride scooters that you could hang out with and never talk about scooters (laughs) (laughs) yeah i was uh i always tell everyone like i don't i don't even think i would invite like if I got married, I don't know <laughs> if I'm, I'm inviting scooter riders because I've seen scooter riders at weddings and they're wearing like suits and everything. They're looking real nice. And then they're just wearing like some skate shoes. And then I'm like, <laughs> no way you're coming to my wedding like that. <laughs> but also like, I don't know if I want to like, like, I don't even know if I want them to be like, like, if, I, like, if they're going to be my actual friend, like, or anything. Like, I know we're like good, like, yeah, we're good scooter friends, but like at, like at a wedding, like, I'm not going to want to talk to you about scootering at a wedding. Like, yeah, you know, what I mean? like I want to, I want to talk about like, oh, like 
I don't even know. I don't even know like what I want to talk about at weddings, but I, I don't know. Weddings are too stressful. But I just think like I don't know if I'm gonna invite a scooter rider to a wed- like one of my weddings or one of my weddings. I can be married multiple times. But I, <laughs> if I get married, if I would invite a scooter rider. So you're part of a group of people that are in their twenties that have been in scootering probably like half their life or more and. Hmm you know, you've kind of like, you've had all these sponsors and you filmed all these videos. Um, I feel like you and like a lot of people in this category kind of don't know what to do next right now. Like these past couple of years, people like some of my friends have like wanted to scooter, but they just don't know what to do with scootering because it's like, you know, what am I going to do? Just like film another part and just keep doing that. So do you feel like this? And I don't know, like, have you thought of, what you want to do with scootering in the future if you're still like interested in something yeah i right now i have no idea like what i want to do like if i'll ever film like there's there's, like times where i'm just like dude i want to film a part like i just want to film a part but then like majority of the time i'm just like i don't know if i'm gonna film another part again you know like a solo part just me full-on like part yeah but i don't know it's it's hard because right now like like I said earlier, it's just like, I want to do me. And like, I want to ride my spots. Like I'm at that point where it's just like, when it comes to scootering, I'm going to do me. I don't get paid to do this. I don't, there's nothing, you know? So like, why would I not do me? Yeah. But future wise, like if I like, hopefully one day I can have enough money and I just want, I would like to like start my own team overall. Like, like have my own scooter part, like just only a deck. That's all I would like to do is just a deck. Just, that's the only thing I would focus on is just the deck because I think when you try to push all these other parts, you get lost in like making complete scooters and then you get in like the, you know, you got to apply to like all kids only mainly or like mainly you're just doing kids. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'd like to do deck and just like kind of look out for those kids. Like I think that's my biggest problem why I've had so many teams is like I just don't, I don't really like feel like I fit in like on teams like can't say like they're all like my actual friends you know like mm-hmm. they're scooter friends but i would like to find like kids that are just like kind of outcast in scootering because they're not doing the newest trends and stuff like that and like get a bunch of young kids and just kind of like like get them together and like actually have like a friend group to where we're all on the same team and if someone gets married everyone's invited to the wedding because we're actual friends and family you know what i mean and like no like like of course you're gonna have like conflict no matter like what but it's just everyone kind of just like figures it out on themselves you know like yeah we don't have enough money for a hotel let's go camping and no one be bummed on it you know yeah and just i don't know just also like kids who just are okay with not like having the luxury lifestyle (laughs) you know just and having like a big say like i just want everyone to have a say in it like even the, the riders to be like like if i had a deck and they're like yo ralph that's whack I'm like, okay, guys, you don't like it, so why am I going to make it? Like, that's who matters to me first is, like, the team. Yeah. Um, it'd so- be cool. It sounds like Helligrip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> know, Helligrip, Helligrip kills it. I Like, I don't ever want to say anything bad because I love, like, Helligrip so much. You know what I mean? Like, those dudes are the best and everything. But um, I think there's, like, it's too many people. You know what I mean? Like, but it is just script tape but like there's just so many people on Helligrip where like I'm just like dude how are we supposed to film like videos with this many people on there or something like that you know what I mean like especially yeah. when like, everyone's so separated and stuff like it's so hard and like I think that's what most skater teams mess up with is just too many people and I would just kind of keep like the team like low key mm-hmm. like just a few riders like no more than like six until these until these guys get older and like they're like dying down you know and then we'll get some younger kids again and then keep it like going like i don't know it'd just be it'd be like a i look when i look at like teams i look at like like anti-hero like i think what the anti-hero does is just like they camp they just all spend like they, they just do it whatever they whatever happens happens kind of style you know what i mean yeah and i think you can't really like i think with scooter companies people like try to plan too much and it's like when you plan and something doesn't go as you planned you have no idea what to do and you're just stressed out about it but it's just you got to it comes to clips, you gotta let the riders just figure out themselves, like, do you like the spot? No? Next spot, and then let's figure out what you do like or whatever, you know, let's get you motivated. Mm-hmm. I just, I, I'd like to be in scootering for, like, for as long as I could, but I, I'm just gonna wait for everything to, like, die down, 
because I don't know. I think everyone's just even companies just copying each other, riders copying each other, and just kind of let every like all that copying stuff just die down and just like a fresh start, you know? Yeah, yeah, for sure. I wouldn't, I'm not trying to like make like millions of dollars off scootering. It'd just be nice if I could just pay some rent with scootering or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Or like even even food money or get reimbursed back for a trip that I just helped like spent filming for your company you know at least like reimburse me back on that yeah something small but i I get it it's hard but i don't even know like i just it would be sick to own a company one day but not right now because there's no way i can like babysit kids right now (laughs) (laughs) that's what that's what it is on trips you just have to babysit these guys make sure no one does anything stupid yeah make sure they get clips you gotta just babysit them and i i'm not ready for that yet i'm trying to think because like even yeah because we already covered like me even trying to what what's like next in like scootering for me because I, I don't know if I'm gonna even film another part. I do mm-hmm. have that video still on hold. I don't know what's up. Like I remember how I told you that video. I don't know when it's getting released and it's like been done for so long. For you to do like the next thing or whatever, like do you think it has to be a video part? Like that's something myself I'm just kind of getting sick of because it feels so repetitive just like putting out a three minute video part every year. Like I feel like it's just I'm trying to like figure out how I can like ride in the same way and have the same experience, but maybe like the actual output of it, I want it to be a little bit different than just like a video of me, you know? Yeah. I I was thinking about actually, um, cause like a lot of scooter riders, you know, they're right now. Everyone like, it's really funny. I I find scootering so funny. Cause like when I started getting back into it, I'm like, dude, these Instagram videos are whack. And like, yeah, I've, I've posted, like, I've never made like a full, like, this is like a video like a song and like a full like part on instagram you know i just post like a single clip whatever yeah but um so like you like go up to people like yeah like these instagram videos are whack and like everyone's like yeah instagram videos are whack everyone says it and they do it and then right now everyone's like focus on video parts and it's like no not just youtube parts like that's that's just a a three minute long like instagram video pretty much still yeah you know and it's like (laughs) get the whole team like it doesn't even have to be a team get your crew together whatever and like film a full length like Mm -hmm. just you know put time into it and like actually have a premiere premiere and i think um i think that's what sucks for scootering it's like everyone complains about all this stuff and it's like they don't try to get scooter riders together more like the only time scooter riders really get together now it's like just jams Mm -hmm. but like even if it's like a mid lane get have a little barbecue at a shop or whatever and like Ha- invite everyone have little sales or whatever invite everyone over and get like the riders together more often than just jams like not even on like riding face like hanging out faces you know like everyone just hangs out yeah well there's there's very few scenes i feel like that are at that point like there's a lot of like scenes where maybe it's like three people but for their scene to be like i don't know like 10 people or more that's pretty rare like scooter riders are really spread out it seems like yeah no like especially i I understand that the most because like being in riverside you know like i don't have anyone to like film the full length with or do anything scooter related to honestly yeah so it's like i understand like it is hard but like even still maybe even like a collab like you have like everyone's like friends on instagram like it looks sick like you know you have um like who is it like badger and uh louis opel like those dudes are in different countries but yet they like looks like they get along the, like super well and they're like really good friends that's like what if they just like get footage together and make like a little video happen like that way or you know what i mean well I they, they, they pretty much did like perish in in the evil corp video <laughs> that is true yeah 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 that, yeah i think i think what parish is doing is like parish is killing it i think parish is like the savior of scootering <laughs> <laughs> he's just gonna he's just gonna help everyone be like Parish can just help everyone be like so much better not even like trick wise but like style wise and everything like Parish is really cool to hang out with he can he can uh just help you your videos look way better and you become like better as like not even just like as a person but as like a scooter rider and everything like he just helps so much on every every aspect Parish is like the best dude ever yeah I, I remember when he started evil he was just telling me he was like I just want there to be good scooter videos and I've waited and waited and finally like I just realized there will never be any good scooter videos for the most part so he just had to make them himself you know what I mean 
yeah because there was always like a constant struggle with him and andrew like he didn't want to make these like just highly polished like trip videos to like like garage rock songs and you know just like the the proto videos are good but they're sort of meant to like appeal to sell scooter parts you know Mm -hmm. um and it's more about that i feel like and i mean i don't know uh, with like tilt videos it's the same way like they're meant to be like understood easily so they can sell scooter parts but with what he's doing it feels like very much just about like i want this video to be good like that's all that matters it's just about the video parish i think is like the best scooter rider overall like he has the style he has the sickest tricks you know and everything and like his videos are the best and everything parish does is so sick he's like literally he has to be my favorite person to like go on filming trips with and like hang out and i just went on one and i'm like dude i want you around all the time <laughs> and uh i i felt bad because i told him i was like dude when you first like started coming up i thought he rode really slow and i didn't like his riding but like right now i'm like he's my favorite person to watch scooter and to scooter with like i, yeah. I told him i was like dude i felt i feel so bad because like i probably have like told other people like oh, i don't really like parish's riding but then like <laughs> i'm right now i'm like dude you're the savior of scootering like literally like he's gonna help like so many people look better on on film and everything like yeah he is, he is just like the savior for scootering hopefully evil does like really well and like is around as long as possible yeah, and I th- I think it's cool too how he's not um I don't know, like I guess like tied to certain people. Like he went he went to New York and filmed like a video of Dylan Morrison and but it, but it was like and it was so different than any of his other videos or any of Dylan Morrison's videos because it was filmed by Parrish, but it's like I think it's just in the way people are presented like anybody can be like pretty sick like regardless of if like dylan is just back flipping like eight stairs like i don't know just the way parish like did it it looked cool yeah yeah i think um i'm telling you parish just like i don't know even that like uh ventura video like i don't think everything was like as sick as it looks in the video like honestly like parish just killed it so hard with everything and um me and parish even talked about like style and tricks that like you know like there's like some difficulty to it and like we were just talking about it and uh I, and i think the reason with like scootering the like when you know kids who don't like necessarily have like the most difficult tricks doing you know like the tricks aren't that difficult yeah i think uh like it just doesn't work because like and it doesn't look as good because they're going so slow or something you know what i mean and like they don't have that style yet and it's probably because they just started doing that like that style like the tricks and stuff but if they like hold on to it they'll probably eventually go faster and like everything like make it look way better you know being more simple and still like working out yeah 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 because parish and i talked about that like the whole trip and like he was saying like there always has to be somewhat like a difficulty to the trick and i was like i mean yeah like sure like i even think of that like oh like that's too easy like you know whatever mm-hmm. but but then again it's like sometimes it looks better in my mind like i, I filmed like over a double rail hop the other day i tail whipped it and then everyone's like you should double tail up and i'm like there's really not like that much of a skill gap between a tail up and a double tail up on like you know yeah <laughs> And it's like, but the tail whip looks way better. And they're just like, oh, well, like, back three it or something. And I'm just like, why? Like, I thought the tail whip looked sick. Like, I'm stoked on the tail whip. Why are you guys trying to get me to do something else, you know? <laughs> and it's just like, I don't know. I think if you just push push it long enough, like, the the, sim- the or like the basics of it, mm-hmm. of scootering, it can look better the more, like, you just keep doing it. Like, like I was saying with the board slides, like, that pivot thing, I think it looks way better now doing a pivot in my front boards and back boards then hopping out of it Mm -hmm, yeah and those are just simple tricks and i think that's what scootering like needs is like the some like just the simple tricks to look good so people can actually like figure out like what style means you know because i mean yeah you can do difficult stuff like that would always be sick but it's like i don't know how far like like being like really good at scootering is going to take you because like every year there's like someone even better than this person you know and that person died down so it's like why would you like? Why, wouldn't you want to just like be able to scooter forever? 
like not injure yourself and scooter forever and still like look good yeah yeah i mean it's always kind of an impossible pursuit to like I, th- I think that's why like jordan got kind of discouraged about scooter riding because his riding was so technical and after he filmed his part for tilt 2 he was just like i don't know what to do now like that that was it that was that was what i got <laughs> yeah yeah that's why i'm just i was telling paris the whole time like dude it's okay to not be like that difficult but then i like i guess like uh we we're there's something we we're filming because after that night of like talking about like he's you know like it's a little debate going on and then like the next day uh we were filming something and he's like ralph you should do this and i was like no nah, dude that's like too easy and he's like see and i was like oh, god <laughs> damn it like all right all right there is like sometimes you know what i mean like not about to like i don't even know what the trick was it was just something i was just like that's too easy and he's like see exactly (laughs) yeah that's true like you do want to try a little bit you know yeah (laughs) you don't want to you don't want to like just my tilt two part just half-ass everything yeah i don't don't know i guess is there anything else you want to talk about uh i think it's just like just mainly just like scooter riders uh not like caring that much because even when it comes to like skateboarding you know like scooter riders want skateboarders to like them (laughs) And it's just like, dude, stop, like, just stop caring, you know? Like, that's, it's, like, I never scootered to get uh, approval from skateboarders, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, dude, if a skater, like, like, I don't know if you saw this whole Vice thing going on, you know? And, like, obviously, I don't think that Vice person skates who did the interview. And, like, yeah, of course, like, fuck that guy. But you don't have to make such, like, a big, like, they're all commenting on his, like, Instagram and stuff like that. I'm just like, holy shit, scooter riders. Like, that, that, like, just, just let like whatever yeah it sucks that he says that but it's like there's nothing you can do it's already out there then vice isn't going to be like sorry scooter riders or whatever you know what i mean what happened so i guess like this guy talked about scootering like it's like the uh it's like he talked it it sucks because like scootering is everyone's talking about those like bird things that are going around yeah and they're like comparing scootering to that like it's the same category right now Oh wow! And <laughs> so the guy like it was mainly talking about those birds at first, and then he talks about actual scootering, like doing tricks, and like he does say some pretty douchey things. Like he was like, everyone gets into extreme sports to get their like sexual appeal better, or something like that. Like something you're gonna hook up more because you do extreme sports. He's like, but if you're gonna do that, wouldn't you skate or BMX? Like why would you scooter? Like and he's just saying like he talked a lot of shit on scootering, and I get it. It's super whack, but it's just like there's there's nothing to do like it's probably not going to change his mind that a bunch of kids are commenting like you're so whack dude and like all this stuff you know what i mean (laughs) like it's not going to change his mind at all so it's just like dude why do you like don't try to change his mind like talk to these like scooter riders more and just like open up like yeah like you know this would be cool like talk about scootering to scooter riders don't try to like talk to it about skaters or bmxers you know like whatever yeah because in the end skaters don't care they just care about skateboarding yeah, for sure. I feel like that's always, I mean, over the years, it's always happened where scooter riders, like, sort of model their riding off skateboarders, and skateboarders, like, don't even know that scooter riding is, it exists. <laughs> I think, like, it took me so long, because, you know, like, I always thought skateboarding was, like, the sickest thing, and, like, meeting skaters, and I'm like, oh, dude, like, hope, like I don't ever want to tell, like, skaters I scooter or whatever, you know, like, when I just meet, like, a new skater. And then, like, in the end, now, like, the first thing I do, I'm always like, yeah, I scooter. Like, everyone at Active knows I scooter now, and they all think it's so sick. Like, they all watch my tilt part, and they get so hyped on it. (laughs) Yeah. And it's just like, yeah, that's cool. But, like, even if they, like, said it was whack or whatever, I'd just be like, yeah, whatever, dude. Like, there's nothing I'm going to do to change your mind. Like, I'm not going to argue, like, why I think, like, you should like scooter riders, you know? Yeah. It's just whatever. Like, and I think with scooter riding, they just, they just want to be approved by like skaters and it's just like dude whatever like i'm pretty sure like yeah the skater talks shit on the scooter but like at the end of the day i don't think he's gonna go home like oh like maybe i should give scootering a chance or like anything he probably doesn't <laughs> even go home and think about scootering he probably goes home and thinks about skateboarding you yeah. know what I mean? like it's just it doesn't matter like it, it, i don't know scooter riders get so stuck up on like people bad talking scootering and like yeah it sucks but it's just like are you gonna change your mind no so then like just ignore them you know i don't know i wish i wish like scooter riders just cared about only scootering as much as like skaters care only about skateboarding well what do you think they care about i just think like most scooter riders want to be like part of that cool club now since they all get like so many followers they're famous you know mm-hmm, yeah 
and it's just like that's I don't think like that's how people like work like just because you have 10k and like someone else has 10k your friends it's like <laughs> you still have to go off of like if you like each other or not you know just as people yeah <laughs> yeah and I, but I also realized like too like talking about this like um it's not even like when I talk about like getting bummed on like scooter riders and stuff like that it's most of the time it's not even like their actual scooter riding that bums me out it's a lot of it's like their personality just bums me out so much because they're so like like kind like they're I don't want to say like into themselves but I don't know how to explain it. They're just kind of like I just want to say like douchey and like bratish, you know, like frat boys. Mm, yeah. And and it like bums me out because that's not what I want to hang out with. So then like I don't want to watch the scootering because obviously like it kind of like shows in their scootering too. I don't know, like whoever is like like for like the people like listening, I guess, uh, like even me like saying all this stuff. Like I know people are gonna be like, oh, like that's like like you know they're gonna have something to say, and it's like, dude, who cares about what I say too? You know what I mean? Like <laughs> I'm just saying what I think. Like these rules. Are for me myself like i don't tell people these and like expect people to change i'm like it's the opposite I, these are the rules i'm telling you that work for me like this is myself you know yeah totally yeah and it's just i always hate like talking about like that stuff because i was like dude i'm so negative in scootering everyone thinks i'm probably so whack because i'm so negative but then like <laughs> stop think like it's like stop thinking about like what i say actually because these are the rules i'm telling you my rules for myself yeah. it's not for you guys to follow or anything like that do whatever you want but i just personally like these are my like rules for myself to keep like i wish people could like go in my brain for a second when i like film a trick and like how like much how much pressure i put on myself like does that look good do i need to go faster like all these rules like is this actually sick to me and like all these things and it's like dude i'd stress myself out when it comes to like what i should (laughs) feel i'm like dude i don't know if that was sick or not like it sucks because skeetering like you we film like videos so fast that we don't have time to really like we don't want that clip in. We don't want that clip in. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like they're like, all right, I want these clips in. I want these clips in. But like, it's just you don't. We don't even have like B-roll that much besides us falling. But like every clip we get goes in the video usually. Yeah, yeah. It'd be it'd be cool to have a selection. That'd be really cool to have a selection like one day. Mm-hmm. But I also don't film that much, so I can't have a selection. It's <laughs> like, all right, here you go. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I don't know what else. Okay. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I mean, it's up to you. If you have more stuff, I'm always down. But no, I I, just, I think that's good. I think I think we got plenty for sure. Yeah, I just I just hope like uh like I just can see it now like like uh just someone like having like something to like say about like one of my opinions. I'm just gonna be like, oh, dude, that's what I'm saying. Like, don't care about my opinion either. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, it's funny like because like I do try to hang out with scooter riders more now. Like when like scooter stuff goes on, but. I don't know. Every time I talk about scootering, I, I probably just bum people out. They probably think like I'm a diehard like I hate. I'm a scooter rider that hates scooter riding. You know, <laughs> <laughs> like no, I just, I just do. I don't know. I always, I like. Of course, there's a lot of stuff to complain about. I, I probably find the negative is more than the positives. Like there's probably so many sick things in scootering that I'm, I'm not even aware of because I'm so like, no, I don't want to watch that. No, no, like no, it's not going to be sick. I'm not going to watch that. Parish didn't make it. I'm not watching it. <laughs> <laughs> you know but i don't know it's just the way it goes right now it's just uh i don't know I, I don't i don't know how to like you know those people that are just all like happy all the time and like oh everything's cool man that style is sick that style is sick I'm like how do you not have an opinion like how do you not care about something <laughs> yeah i know what you mean yeah but then again it's like i always tell people it's like i just care about i like actually do care about scootering like so much that's why like think so much about like scootering and stuff and have so much to say about scootering because like i really hope it does like go farther than it is right now i hope one day some kid uh can pay his rent like like or not even just one kid but like you know they could just make a full living off of scootering that'd be really cool for someone yeah all right man it was good talking yeah for sure uh yeah i'll just uh i'll let you know how things are going but uh this is gonna come out on friday so yeah okay sick okay oh damn so i'm like the i'm the last one of the year huh uh yeah yeah you, you're episode number 20 actually <laughs> oh, sick should have been episode 420 but whatever <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right all right man good talking for sure see ya right. see you dude all right that was it for episode 20 i hope you enjoyed it uh something to look forward to there was kind of before and after this conversation I had with Ralph, there was like a lot of 
conversation that was so far off topic from scootering and kind of like dragging on that I didn't really feel like it was adding to the episode so I cut it out but I think for the first time uh, just since I have that stuff and I usually don't have stuff like that with other people I'm going to just put out a it looks like it's going to be around 20 minutes like a 20 minute bonus episode and of just us talking about random stuff and I mean who knows if anybody will be interested but because I have it, I'm going to put it out. So I'll probably put that out um, a couple weeks after this episode comes out. Just time it so it's in between this episode and the next official episode. And the next official episode, uh, pretty exciting. I'm flying to Austin, Texas in January uh, just to ride with all the people there. So I'm going to be doing sort of uh, another like location-based uh, episode with Theo Kodik, Matt Ogle, Andy Koki, and just whoever else I run into there. So that should be pretty cool. And as always, thanks to Ben Bursell for the music and graphic design for this show. If you have any questions or suggestions, email thetandempod at gml.com. And if you could leave me a review or like rating in iTunes that'd be great because it just makes it easier for people to find on iTunes um, which I think is the best way really to listen to podcast um, and that's it see you next month bye